today on Doomed! What a week it has been, right? I mean, uh, the way some outlets and platforms were taking the news from the past uh, couple of days, well, a few days ago, I should say, over the weekend. Yeah, you'd think uh, it was the end of the world. I think uh, World War III was the exact term being thrown around. Well, we're going to talk about that and a few other things and take your calls on this episode of Doomed with uh, me, your host. Well, let me pull me up on the screen. I've yet to do that. Matt Binder, how you doing? It's me. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, a, a rare live stream where I believe I started exactly on time. To the to the minute. I think this might be the first time in history that's happened. Of course, if you're listening to the podcast version of this show, none of that matters to you whatsoever. It's I'm I'm always on time because you're listening to me at the exact moment you want to. <laughs> well, uh, let's uh, I guess let's get to um, let's get to it. Let's get to it because. Uh, you know, I don't have too much to say because uh, World War III uh, did not happen, I guess, yet, I can say. And you, you could say that for as long as you need to because uh, maybe it'll never happen. Maybe one day it will. Uh, but uh, World War III not happened yet. Right. So if you haven't been paying attention, if, if, if you're getting this bit of news from me first on this show, um, please check your news diet and uh, probably should pay more attention to breaking news when it happens. But just in case, maybe you're just you know maybe you're just waking up from a, a coma or you've been living you've been you know you've you you lived uh, you got stranded on a deserted island for a couple of days. Just in case, just in case you hadn't heard. Iran had launched um, drones with, um, you know, rockets over the weekend towards Israel. Uh, if you were paying attention, you probably saw everyone talking about World War Three. I, you know, I always hate. Listen, can can it happen? Of course, but I think I think the sort of fear mongering and bringing it up. It's it's no better than like the the rights upset, and this isn't a left thing only, so it's not completely analogous. Obviously, the right does this too. But if you are on the left and bringing this up as World War Three or whatever, I think it's sort of analogous to you know the rights fear mongering over potential civil war happening any day now in this country. Uh, again, we're, I don't know of any people on the left who are like monetizing it. There's no like food uh, packages or prepper uh, monthly subscriptions that I've seen for sale. But I just don't think generally we should, you know, fear monger. You know, if World War Three actually happens, then we could talk about World War Three happening. Uh, but... Until then, we shouldn't go, uh, we shouldn't even, you know, I, I thought it was, when I saw what happened, I thought it was, um, you know, is it is it possible that Israel retaliates to Iran's retaliation? Sure, I guess. Um, is it possible that that escalates further than just between those two countries? Sure, I guess. Has any of that happened yet? No. Seems more like we're going to avoid a potential situation more so than it seems like there will be one, right? Um, listen, if there is actually a World War III, then you can you can monetize by selling the food buckets, okay? At least, 
at least sell the food buckets when the doomsday scenario is actually a reality and occurring in real life. Don't sell it on the premise of it being a pos like you need it because it could happen or it is going to happen, wink, wink, even though you know it's not. And then that's a scam. If you're selling the food buckets in an actual scenario where a food bucket may be possible, then that's no longer a scam. <laughs> Catch my drift? Uh, but anyway, you know, back to uh, what actually happened. Um, you know, Israel and the U.S., and I believe I saw, uh, with help too from uh, Qatar, I think it was Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, and even Jordan, intelligence from those countries, I believe it was. Uh, I think all those drones and rockets were shot down. And in a statement from Iran, they considered that to be the conclusion of that campaign. Now, if you were watching the news and did know this happened, you might be unaware, though, of another very significant fact. And that fact is that Israel, I think it was last week or maybe two weeks ago, Israel had they uh, launched an airstrike on... Iran's consulate, like an embassy, in, I believe it was Damascus, but definitely in Syria. In Syria. Now, you know, usually embassies, consulates, things like that are considered out of bounds when it comes to, you know, disputes between countries and attacks occurring but Israel launched an airstrike killing a Iranian general I believe it was and a few other officials so Iran's attack over the weekend was the retaliatory attack it was a retaliation That was missing from a lot of the coverage. Now, we can talk about and the mainstream media does this a lot. I mean, you literally see it brought up by politicians, by mainstream media figures. Whenever something is done to Israel. And Israel responds completely out of proportion to the thing that was done to them. For example, i.e. Um, their response to total Gaza and just wipe out the vast majority of an entire area in response to October 7th, killing, I believe it is now, over 33,000 Palestinians, including many innocent men, women, and children. The common refrain we hear from people who defend Israel's actions is that Israel has a right to defend itself. They say that phrase ad nauseum over and over again, even in response to questions where that doesn't really make sense in the context as an answer. Yet, you know, that is their answer regardless. Israel has a right to defend itself. But. When Israel attacks a 
Iranian, the Iranian embassy in Damascus. And then Iran responds to that attack. All you do is see the condemnation of Iran's response. There is no utterance, there's no phrase that Iran has a right to defend itself. I mean, listen, this isn't a pro or anti Iran or a pro or anti Israel argument. This is just facts. If a country is attacked and they have a right to defend themselves, why is it that when that country attacks another country, that other country does not have the right to defend itself? It's just very hypocritical. It's insanely hypocritical. And yes, they'll trot out that Iran, um, you know, the intelligence shows that Iran funds this group and that group and Hamas and Hezbollah, whatever. But the point is, there are other ways to respond to that, though, too, right? Again, the point is that attacks on embassies, consulates, what are supposed to be sort of safe zones, where diplomacy rules, and countries could sit down and sort of use those diplomatic ties to work things out, those are supposed to be hands-off. I mean, it is... It is truly... Astonishing. I mean, it, I guess it isn't astonishing. Because... We know that that's the rules, right? Israel can do that. And other countries cannot. And hold on, I'm pulling two videos here because they were very stunning. To, I'm not stunning. I keep saying stunning. I'm turning into Sam Cedar. Because um, they are perfect encapsulations of this dynamic playing out in real time. Um, all right, let me pull this up. Here is a clip. Of former British Prime, Prime Minister David Cameron on Sky News. Let me pull this clip up right now. Uh, one sec. Oh, here we go. I got it. Some technical difficulties. Give me a second. All right, here we go. Let's watch this clip together. It's 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 truly amazing. Is it bad judgment or good judgment to hit uh, Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus? Look, that was a map. That's something the Israelis decided to do. Yeah, we haven't good. made a. I know. Well, I, let me. I'll, I'll answer the question, which is I, I can completely understand the frustration the Israelis feel when they look at. Uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and they look at the terrible things that they have done all over the world, including the support they give to Hamas. And, of course, Hamas were responsible for October the 7th, and that is where all of this begins. So you can... mm, that's where all of this begins. 
doing a lot of work in this very short amount of time, about 30 seconds, with some of that being the question from the presenter. But it's amazing that you know. Uh, let, let, let's let's listen again because because I'm gonna I'm gonna we should we should really note all the the things here. He's, he does Is it in 30 bad seconds. judgment or good judgment to hit uh, Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus? No, that was a ma that's something the Israelis decided. To that's something the Israelis decided to do. Hit a embassy, Iranian embassy in Damascus. They're just allowed to decide to do that. They're, that's just an, you know. Can you imagine this being said like? Listen, that was something that Iran decided to do. Respect that, okay? Let's continue. Do we haven't made a? I know. Well, I, let me. I'll, I'll answer the question, which is I, I can completely understand the frustration the Israelis feel when mm -hmm. they look at the the frustration the Israelis feel. Do we consider the frustration that any other Middle Eastern Arab or Muslim majority country feels? Do we ever consider that when we take into consideration what their actions are? No, no, we don't. Uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and they look at the terrible things that they have done all over the world, including the support they give to Hamas. And, of course, Hamas were responsible for October the 7th, and that is where all of this begins. So you can... Right, that's where, all this, that's where all history between Israel and Palestine begins. October the 7th. That's the beginning of time, you know. Uh, God created the earth, created everything that we see, and on the seventh day, which actually, you know, this was all, he did that October 1st through the 7th, and then on the seventh day he rested, right? And that just happened to be October the 7th. Um, let's keep going. Completely understand um, the frustration. Yeah, but um, what about Iran's frustration at part of its sovereign territory being flattened? Well, this is, you know, this is... I don't know um, if Sky News usually does this. I've seen a few Sky News clips. It could go either way. Um, you know, but I would be surprised to see many other outlets follow up like this. I would argue there is a, a massive degree of difference oh. between what Israel did in Damascus oh. and, as I said, 301 weapons being launched by the state of Iran at the state of Israel for the first... Oh, I could tell you another difference. Um, you want to talk about the number of weapons used. Well, all those weapons, all those rockets and drones that Iran sent did not... N no casualties in Israel. Um, that, that, that teeny little Israeli airstrike on the Iranian consulate in, uh, uh, Syria, uh, the, people died in that one. People were killed in that one. I would say the casualty number is a much, uh, better barometer in terms of the differences between the two attacks than just how many weapons were involved. I mean, this sounds like, um, you know, oh, this guy unloaded his pistol on me. He he shot me. Uh, he tried to shoot me dozens of times, unloaded his pistol on me. Those are dozens of bullets. All I did was drop a single atomic bomb on him. I mean, give me a break. Time, a state-on-state -state attack, 101 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. That is a degree of difference. Yeah. And I think a reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do? If I, I don't understand. Like, I, this is probably, like, listen, no doubt about it. Iran is not, uh, you know, the good guys or whatever. If we're going to talk like that, to take it to David Cameron's uh, level. You know, um, you know, to what the what what the degree of, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of freedom or autonomy that the people of Iran have, in terms of their ability to even criticize their own government, things like that. Obviously, you know, Iran is uh, sort of it is like an authoritarian theocracy. Um, but 
this is not a good example of them doing something bad. They launched an attack, which honestly, it really does seem like they knew it was going to fail. They basically needed to take action to show its citizens that they aren't weak and that they would respond to Israel. But they knew. I mean, though what they were sending off wasn't going to get through the Iron Dome. And on top of that, from all the reporting I read, they were targeting um, military and governmental uh, targets. So, you don't gotta, like, hand it to Iran. But this is a horrible example of Iran being bad. This is just what you would expect. You attack a country, kill their officials, they're going to respond. for Iran to have done and I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered well you know what is the true nature of Iran it's there okay. in black and white what would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates mm. well good question good question let's see what David Cameron says I, I guess I'm, I'm gonna assume that Britain has the right to defend itself right I'm, I'm gonna assume they're one of those lucky countries that get to defend itself one of our consulates well, we would take, uh, uh, we, you know, we would take the very strong action. Mm. And Iran would say that that's what they did. Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they, attack. So yeah, they were I right think... to respond, but they overreacted. Is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people did they have accepted. Have a right to respond. Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course, they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been shot right down, respond, but they there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties. But there weren't! There were zero casualties in Israel as far as I've seen. I mean, Iran knew full well too it wasn't getting through. This was a show. It seems pretty obvious including civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take into account. Yeah, of course. You take into account when... Take into account when... Um, when it makes sense, right? When it works in your favor, take that into account. There could have been casualties. Civilian casualties. But, but there weren't. There weren't. There weren't. You could, but, coulda, maybe, imagine if, all you want. But the point is, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And if you're wondering what the U.S. State Department's position is on what happened with Israel attacking the Iranian embassy in Damascus, this is a very telling exchange, too. Let me pull this clip up. Um, this is a State Department official being asked a question by a reporter regarding where they st where the U.S. stands on Israel's uh, attack on Iran, which caused Iran to respond with the their retaliatory attack over the weekend. Before we leave this, have you guys decided yet or made a determination about whether what Israel hit in Damascus was a diplomatic we, facility we, or not? We have not. We have not. So how long is this going to take? I can't answer that question. We're look, continuing to look into it. Um, I don't have a timetable, well, but it's something that we're... What more do you need to... Uh, uh, we need to, to gather enough information that will allow us to make an actual determination. You, got, you have no one on the ground in Syria. We have a range... Overtly, as I, I So the, the U.S. position right now seems to be that they're unsure if the Iranian consulate in Damascus counts as an official Iranian government building. And so this reporter is asking, w w have they determined yet? What, what's taking so long? What's going on here? Let, let's, 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 let me play from the beginning. It was only about 15 seconds we played through. Before we leave this, have you guys 
decided yet or made a determination about whether what Israel hit in Damascus was a diplomatic we, facility we, or not? We have not. We have not. So how long is this going to take? I can't answer that question. We're look, continuing to look into it. Um, I don't have a timetable, well, but it's something that we're... What more do you need to... Uh, uh, we need to, to gather enough information that will allow us to make an how? actual determination. Got, you have no one on the ground in Syria. We have arranged... Overtly, as I, I said to you when uh, the last time you engaged with me on this question, we have an, uh, a range of abilities, a range of ways to gather information. They're partner countries of ours who yeah. are on the ground. We have intelligence capabilities, off, uh, obviously. Um, and we're continuing to gather information, but we've not yet been able to yeah. make determination. I, 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 I get it, but you were pretty quick into, you know, condemning the, uh, you know, the invasion of the Mexican embassy in, uh, in, in, in Ecuador. That was a very clear, well-established embassy. And this is not very clear uh, where the, they the, blew up. The, this is something that is taking a little bit more time No one to, died to in that incident. Uh, that's not the question. The question was, what is it? Is it was it an embassy or a consulate or not? And it was very yeah. clear. How in, in hard the, it was very is clear to that out? In the case of the Mexican, it's something that we're gathering information it's been on. Like two weeks, uh, and we continue More. to gather information. We don't have a determination. Yet. I mean, it, it it's it sounds to me very obviously that uh, the U.S. is trying to. Uh, finagle its way out of having to condemn Israel's initial attack, which was on an Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. The idea that we are arguing over whether was it was it really was it really an embassy or a consulate, or was it just a, just a building where their general and a bunch of other Iranian officials were canoodling? Was it really a consulate? Did they did they have the appropriate paperwork? Oh, they did. Uh, was it was it did, did was there a sign on the door that said "Embassy, enter here"? Did they have that? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I mean, it's it's a joke. It's a joke, and you know, I we we hear. Um, you know, and and to 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 get a little bit back to to sort of wrap this up so we can get to uh, taking questions and calls, because I know I say this every week that oh it's going to be a call-in show and then I ramble on for an hour and a half all on my own and then before you know it uh sorry only have time for a few calls I'm getting tired so to make sure that doesn't happen today I'm going to make sure I give you guys plenty of time to call in. So, let's just get back to the beginning now. You know, Israel having the sort of tenacity to go ahead and just attack a maybe not official Iranian embassy or consulate in the, in the view of the U.S. government. But either way, their decision to attack clearly was to goad Iran into responding. It's it's clear to me that I mean this is a this is this is a country that's currently involved in a massive war camp one sided war campaign. In Gaza. And its economy is struggling. The, Israel is, is in big trouble. This war is taking a toll on that country. Again, when I say war, I mean like, you know, the IDF is there doing war. There's just no one on the other side to respond because, you know, Gaza doesn't have a military. Um, but Israel is doing this to obviously drag the United States even further into, uh, you know, the trenches with Israel and Biden enabled all this. Biden enabled all this. Like, if, if the response from Iran was even bigger and more destructive, and if Israel then responded even bigger and then more destructive, and that there was an actual 
and again, it still could happen. But if this escalates into a full-on multi-state versus state war where countries are taking sides and getting pulled in, and again, I hesitate to say World War III, but if something escalates to a level of an actual war between countries, then Joe Biden bears a huge responsibility for this because he enabled Israel every step of the way. He, his inability to say no to Israel, his inability to have the U.S. put their money where their mouth is when they tell Israel not to do something or at least to reconsider something, yet still send them billions of dollars in weapons. He will bear the responsibilities or partial responsibility for all this. And if it gets to that point, then what's what's the whole argument against uh, Trump, right? What's the whole argument against Trump being uh, too reckless? Not a real statesman, can't handle foreign affairs. This isn't a pro-Trump message, obviously. You should all know my feelings on Donald Trump. This is a, who cares if Donald Trump recklessly gets us into a war or Joe Biden statesmanly gets us into a war? It doesn't matter at that point. The whole point was that we were told that Joe Biden or whatever, insert Democrat here, would be able to avoid situations that Trump would get us into because they would focus on diplomacy. They would focus on being true statesmen and working things out between countries. But all I see is the same recklessness. All I see is the same recklessness, to be honest. Just because Trump would pound on his chest and slip on a banana peel and get us into war, doesn't make it any different if Joe Biden gets us into a war because he refuses to be the leader of the world superpower and actually put his foot down and say, enough, you cannot do this. Or if you do this, we will not help you. The whole point is the Democrats are supposed to be the big boys in the room, right? They'll handle it. Their objective would be to avoid war. Not to avoid war unless their buddy Israel needs some help because they got themselves into a real pickle because of their own behavior. And then, oh, well, we got we to well, we get into a war now. Because at that point, there, there is no difference. Both Donald Trump and Joe Biden will be recklessly getting us involved in war. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's 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 like it's it's almost laughable because that was like one of the major things, right? That was one of like the major points Democrats took up against Donald Trump, right? Oh, you can't. He's a he's a wild card. He's gonna get us involved into war because he's he's so he's so egotistical. He's got such a huge ego. He's gonna he's gonna b b fumble us into a, a a wartime scenario. I mean, I, I view no difference between Donald Trump doing that and what Joe Biden is currently doing with Israel and that lead us in, leading us into a, a potential war. There'd be no difference.
Um, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. let's uh, let's go to the second half of the show, right? Let's do this. Let's. I'm giving you guys extra call time. Again, anyone could call in. Uh, phone lines aren't open yet, but you could get your Skype ready. Open Skype, uh, the app, or uh, for the web, or for your phone, or you could just go to the website. There's a web interface. Go to Skype. Search Doomed Live. Doomed Live. I believe it so shows up as Doomed Live underscore one, but if you just type in Doomed Live, it'll show up. Um... Anyone, member or not, freebie listeners can call in too. You'll be able to call into the show. Before we jump to that, that 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 side of the, the show. Folks, if you can support what I do here, and let me tell you, there's gonna be there's gonna be more coming down the pike. I'm uh you know, I know you've been hearing me talk about the newsletter and videos. I'm actually officially now getting that stuff ready. Um so that should be uh, coming along very soon now. And so I'll be giving you all a lot more content. So if you can support this show, go to patreon.com slash Matt Binder to give me a financial contribution every month. Um, I want to give a shout out to Cy A, Dan, Peace Seeker, and Brian B, my latest patrons. That's everyone who's joined this month so far. It's Like I said, it's been a slow year. People have been struggling. So we've lost some patrons, haven't, um, you know, we're, we're down from our previous peaks. Um, so it sort of made the show sort of have to hold back on expanding and doing that stuff. But I'm working on it. Taking a little bit more time, but I'm working on it. So if you can help, go to patreon.com slash Matt and become a monthly paying subscriber. You can also support this show by going to youtube.com slash and becoming a member there if you prefer that method. That's cool. Um, you can also drop a super chat. I'll read all super chats during the um, the second half of the show. Just a question, a comment, whatever you'd like. I'll read those. You can also support this show by going to twitch.tv slash and uh Becoming a Twitch Prime member, if you want, if you prefer that too. There's so many ways to support. But one additional thing you could do with Twitch is that if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you actually get a free Twitch subscription that you, you know, a free subscription you could give to your favorite creator every month. Amazon includes that Twitch subscription in your Amazon Prime subscription. They just really don't do a good job of telling people about it. So just connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and you get that free monthly Twitch Prime subscription to give to your favorite creator. And I'm telling you this in hopes that you give it to me, but just give it to somebody. Just don't let Jeff Bezos and Amazon keep your money. I mean, they're basically giving you back some of your money that you pay for Amazon Prime to give away to your favorite creator. Do it. It makes complete sense. Um... What else? Uh, yeah, check out my other show, ScamEconomy.com. Check out the podcast version of this show at DoomedCast.com. Uh, be sure to subscribe at YouTube.com slash MattBinder. That's free to do. Be sure to follow me on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash MattBinder. I'm at MattBinder on Twitter, on Blue Sky, on Threads, on Instagram. You name it, I'm probably MattBinder on there. And if not, just search me and you'll find me. Um... And with all that said, give me a few minutes, not even, just give me like a minute to refill my drink. Listen to the cool intro music to the second half of the show while I do that. And uh, you'll be able to call in and I'll read your super chats too. Give me one second. Uh, for freebie listeners on the podcast version of the show, this is where the podcast version of the show will cut off. And this is where I say to you, I will see you all next time on Doomed.
Technological collapse. Corporate fascism. fascism. Corporate journalism. Voter suppression, austerity economics, education matters, rapid homophobia, The phone lines are now open. Let's do this. Oh, we already got callers calling in. Perfect. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is John. I'm calling from Ohio. Uh, I'm um, sorry, what's your name? John. John from John, Ohio. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Uh, John from Ohio. How are you? What would you like to talk about? Well, I'm actually pretty good, thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things. Could I ask you about um money and politics? I right. was actually just curious about that. Um, sure. So sure. I have a question with money and politics, and like it being such like a big thing. I mean, we live in the capitalist nation, like, and money is the mover of everything. Um, how do we combat that? Or how would like somebody combat that that wanted to combat that? I mean, are you talking about? Are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing being that you're talking about, you know, money and politics specifically. You're talking electorally, right? Like, yeah, but like, I mean, we can just focus on money, um, like lobbying or like the major packs, I guess. Oh, okay, like, right, right. You know, so, listen, it's. Or we can do that. I mean, I. I, I will say this: it, it, it does seem like, based on you know, um, elections that have happened and. Um, where, and this is very hard to do, obviously, at scale, but actually meeting people where they are and that face-to-face and explaining to people, you know, I guess if you want to talk about policy, talking with people about why, you know, uh, this policy is good or this policy is bad, not, all, all the money, all the commercials, all the ads, all that influence I still think that does not live up to and can't combat a face-to-face sit-down interaction with somebody. Again, if we're talking on partisan lines, then, you know, that doesn't matter. But if we're actually talking about issues that uh, and talking with someone that can be swayed either way based on just like being informed, um, you know, that that seems to do the trick. The problem is just can't do that on at scale. So money in politics will will always trump that, you know, minus, you know, uh, for example, uh, elections like uh, local elections, I guess on a, on a national level, I guess like house districts can do that. Obviously, we saw that with like AOC, for example, beating like the third in command at the uh, DNC with the, with the Democrats because she was able to, you know, do the work, go out there, meet with voters in her neighborhood. Um you know that that obviously still will triumph from what I have seen so far, but it's just it just can't be done at scale. So obviously, money in politics will 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 continue to be an issue. But messaging always wins. And not, like just, messaging n- 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 not just messaging, but the ability for human interaction, and for the 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 voter or the constituent or the citizen to be able to have that face to face human discussion. With with uh, with with the messenger. So then, just basically access to the person is what the, like as well as 
you know, the messaging, what access to the person. Um, can I ask you and, one more and question? By, and, by, and by access, I don't necessarily mean like access that money buys you either. Like, oh, I'm yeah. just talking about like, listen, people just will trust somebody more. It's just human nature that if you sit down, you meet with someone, the vibes are good. You're, you're looking at them and they, you're, they, they, you're, you're able to see them talking to you, you know, shake their hand. You know, it's, it's, there's a level of trust there from that human interaction that all the money in the world, in my opinion, can't, can't buy for most people. Obviously it's not the case with everyone, but it does seem like that's the one thing that could combat money in politics. Just again, the problem is that just can't be done at scale. Like, you know, throwing money at commercials and ads can. Okay. And can I ask you one more question? Yeah, sure. And, um, it's actually about, um, so I am generally leftist. But like I am, I'm for whatever reason, I am pro gun. Okay. Um, I recently saw something with a lady from Ohio. I'm, I'm from Ohio as I highlighted. I forget her name. I watched it the other day, which I didn't hear about it at all from like many other places, but from this channel that it was the surfs. It was some lady in Clark County, I believe. She had gotten killed by some old guy who was getting extorted, apparently. And she was right. like an Uber driver. Right. But like, I don't know if you know anything about that, but that's just like uh, just like a story, I guess. But anyways, I'm pro-gun. Like, I just view it as, I don't know, a needs for like inner city communities, especially where I think where like violence does happen and where like houses are needed to be protected. And I don't get that. Like, I mean, with that in like, like if, in, right. No, I listen. I see. I, let me let me address no, that. No, no, I see. No, no, I see. No. I see what you're saying. Listen. I don't think. Per, me personally, I I am um, I I am on a personal level anti-gun. I I don't I don't I don't find them to be, um, helpful personally. But I'm not anti-gun in like my politics. Like I'm not looking to ban. I don't think anyone is looking to ban all guns. Would you agree that gun laws should be make it you know should make it more difficult for someone like the guy in that case you just mentioned his yes, ability absolutely. to own a gun right so I think you're right there with most leftists like I don't even think like I don't even think like the Sandy Hook organizations are trying to ban guns they're just trying to enact more gun control measures to make it harder for people who shouldn't have a gun to get a gun. Um, people who are responsible gun owners, people who view it in as, as a, as a, in the way that like, you know, this is a, a, a piece of equipment that can take a life. And so it should be respected as such, and it should be treated as such. Those people, I'm totally fine with them owning a, a gun. I don't have a problem with them owning a gun. Um, so I, I don't think you're even off when it comes to that. Because I think that's honestly what most leftists uh, believe. Like again, me personally, I don't mm. like guns. But if I was to be a politician, I would be. I wouldn't look to people could have a gun as long as they're responsible and treat it the way it should be treated. With the, you know, that's fine with me. Yeah, that's just where my um, politics were clashing. I wasn't sure about how I felt about that. Like, I mean, I can be pro gun in this way. Like, I guess it's logical. Like to be pro gun that way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think, um, anyways, I think most people um, are. I mean, I I don't think like I think that we we allow guns to be out there like openly way too much. Like guns should be yeah, a thing, I, uh, a, a thing that like it should be for defense. Uh, I guess if you're a hunter or something like that, you should be able to do that. If game or whatever, that's fine. But like people shouldn't be like walking down the street like we're you know, in the yeah, wild see, west and I it's gun and it's gun. gun smoke or something. You know what I mean? Like, um, and the story you're talking about people who aren't familiar. So, uh, I believe was it, where, where was this? Was this in North Carolina? I think it was, um, I think it was in the some, it? some, some old guy in his eighties or whatever was the victim of a phone scam. Someone called him up on the phone and tried to convince him that a family member was in prison or was just put in jail and they need money quick for legal representation or something like that. It's a, these sort of scenarios are common phone scams. They're preying on this old guy. And apparently they told him the, the call got heated because I guess he was, uh, you know, angry about it or I don't know if he believed the scenario or not, but the point is he was angry that money was potentially being going to be taken from him. Um, 
And they said that someone was going to come to pick up the money. And so a uh, also elderly, she was younger than the, the, the old guy who was being scammed, but an elderly <laughs> Uber driver, I think she was in her 60s, and she was a black woman. She pulls up to the house. She was... Her services were uh, paid for on oh, Uber oh, through the app. They have a, a package pickup service now where people can get packages picked up by Uber drivers and then delivered to somebody nearby. Um, I, you know, for whatever reason, I guess businesses, I could see how in Manhattan where like courier services are still a thing. I could see that being a thing here in Manhattan. Um and so she pulled up to the old man's house expecting to pick up a package because that's what she was hired to do. She gets out of her car, approaches the house, rings the doorbell or whatever. And then what we know from the uh, her car's dash cam footage is that the old man comes out with a gun. She backs up. He's like chasing her with the gun. She's yelling, help, help. She's going to call the police or whatever. She's got no idea what's going on. Remember, she was just hired to pick up a package through Uber. It's through Uber. Sounds like mm -hmm. it'll be legit, right? And she's like going mm -hmm. to her car to get away. And the old man shoots her multiple times, killing her. Um, he has been arrested. He has been charged, I believe. Uh, you know, I don't know what a, a jury will think, but I think it's very clear that this guy uh, murdered her. And the fact that he was uh, being targeted for a scam through all this, um, the only thing that should that 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 should add to the equation is that they should find the scammer and charge the scammer with that woman's death too. But the old man is totally, but the old man is totally on the line here for that. This the fact that he was being scammed means nothing. This woman was not in on it, and even if she was, she was not violent. She did not put him in danger or. He was there was no self defense excuse. She had no weapon. She was retreating the entire time. And on top of that, the whole the, on top of all that, the, this man, this old man, never needed to even answer the door. He didn't need to open the door at all. He could have just said, mm -hmm. "I'm not answering the door." He didn't even he could pretend that he wasn't even home. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, her um her voice just sounded like she was so horrified. Which was crazy to me. I don't know. I just, I yeah, just registered I mean, that. Anyways. I mean, I think, I think, I think, like, if 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 you think that man shouldn't have a gun, then I think you're lock and step with most mm -hmm. people on the left. Most people who are just even Democrats. I I've yet to see anyone put on the table, uh, ban all guns. I've never seen it. It's never been, as far as I know, never been a, a, a something considered. It's just been additional gun control measures so people like that old man don't have access to a gun okay yeah and i'm probably at like the most stage and all right then that definitely would make sense then thank you very much and um also you did a really really great job with your debate with tim paul keep oh, it up thank Matt, you. all right i appreciate is that where you, you discuss is that where you discovered my um, show no i was um saw you on sam cedar with emma viglin Another um, young man. I don't know his name. He doesn't really talk all that much, does he? Um, oh, uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon Sutton? Uh, Brandon Sutton? Yep. Yes, He's great. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I thought that you did an amazing job there. And then I saw I you with the tip, Tim Paul, and you just did really, really good. I appreciate what you're doing. You keep it up, all right? No, thank you. And feel free to call in any time. And I hope you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, great great to have you watching. I appreciate good. it. All right. You have a good day. And you have good luck with the rest of your calls. Thank you. Take care. Have a great night. I love when I love when people call in for the first time. It makes me so happy. New people discovering the show. Uh, new voices. New uh, uh, you know positions on things that maybe we might not have had someone voice on the show before. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. What's your name? Hello? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Ali Reza. I'm call, uh, calling from Toronto, Canada. Hey, Ali Reza I'm originally from Toronto. From Iran. Oh, how, how you doing? All the, uh, interesting. How, how you doing? What would you like to talk about? Uh, 
Good. Since uh, today you were talking about like Iran, Israel, and United States, I was wondering, and I also know you are a trivial person, so you 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 are interested in like trivia information. Uh, I, I recall that last year there was an article from New York Times. The title of uh, the article was An Untold Story Behind uh, Jimmy Carter's Re-Election. And it, it was talking about how during like Iran hostage crisis, uh, while Carter was the president, uh, people from Reagan's campaign were reaching out to Iranian uh, authorities asking Iranian authorities to postpone release of the hostages so that they can bash uh, Carter in the election. Uh, you, you can search that on uh, uh, Google. Uh, uh, the title is A Four Decade <laughs> Secret. Recently, a, Tex a Texan politician revealed that he was during, uh, he was going through Middle East uh, at the time to uh, deliver the message. And, and to, to a great uh, uh, degree, they, they were successful in doing that. Right. Uh, it, it was never it was never confirmed on behalf of U.S. However, on Iranian side, you can also read this book called My Turn to Speak, written by Mr. Bani Sadr, who, who was the first president of Iran after the revolution. Uh, he, it, he, he was only there for two years, then he was impeached and he had to flee the country and he then lived in France and recently he passed away there. In, in, in that book, on, in the second chapter, he, uh, which the, with the title that Khomeini, the supreme leader of Iran, chose Carter over Reagan uh, and they decided to deal with uh, Reagan rather than Carter. Uh, so the hostages were released on the day of inauguration of Reagan. Now, many Republicans at the time said that, oh, it was Reagan. Iranians were afraid of Reagan. So that's why they decided to release the hostages. Reagan is coming with the power. Uh, meanwhile, it, it, it was not the case. And later in Iran-Contra affair, you will see that Reagan actually, through Israel, sold weapons to Iran and then Iran transferred money all uh, to Contras, uh, which later uh, blew up in the media. Uh, Oliver North took the fall, and Reagan said, nah, I did not know right. anything about it. And, and which technically what he did was treason. And since Oliver North took the fall, uh, uh, everybody knew that, okay, like selling weapons to Iran, which is like your number one enemy, uh, it's treacherous. However, later, George H.W. Bush pardoned Oliver North, and you will see him on Fox News a lot. Right. Uh, I, w I thought you might be interested in, like, when, I, I believe, sorry to say that, but when shit hits the fan, even Israel, United States, and Iran will cooperate. Oh, of course. Right. I mean, if, if, you, if you actually use your... Uh, you know, uh, your power as, you know, I'm, all, all countries I'm talking about here, like if each leader of each of these countries actually want to use uh, to their full uh, potential the, you know, the levers that they can pull, uh, the the advantages that each country has over the other, they can easily, like, may, you know, f find a diplomatic way of working together. Uh, when they really want to, you know, um, you know, the, the, the again, True. like Iran's response, Iran's response uh, over the weekend, like so clearly was just like just to show the people of Iran that they weren't going to let Israel do that and not respond like they fully expected exactly what happened to happen. They didn't think they was going to like anything was going to actually hit a target. Right. It was all over the news that like oh, the drones and the missiles are on the way and about like four hours from now they're going to arrive. Like uh, you will not even get that this type of information about like regular flights from. Uh, but it, it was so precise, like everybody knew already. So uh, there were I'm sure there were notices in advance and like everything was calculated. 
Right. I mean, they they it was very clear that they were gonna they were gonna they were gonna respond, and when they did, it was very clear that like. <laughs> Israel was going to have it handled with their Iron Dome, and that the U.S. was going to step in. I guess, I guess one of the surprises was how much Jordan and and Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, other countries in the area uh, aided in the effort. But I mean, is it really? I mean, none of those countries really want to see. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, well to different extents maybe, but I think in terms of an all-out. War, none of them really want to get pulled into that. Right, right. That's why I do not like take speeches like the one you showed, like David Cameron talking about it. I do not take them at the face value. Like you have to get a little bit deeper. Into right, right. Well, I think the- I think there is something there, though, in terms of who they view as uh, it's it's in the messaging, their messaging more. That's what I usually pay attention to in this. It's not so much you know, what he actually thinks is going to happen. It's it's more so that messaging-wise, he's making it clear that Britain, Great Britain, says Israel has a right to defend itself. Iran doesn't. You know, it's it's it seems that's the message that to take away from something like that, 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 that clip. I see. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, Glad it's... To to what, what's your... What's your... Because you said... It, were you born in Iran? Did you grow up there, or what's? Yes. So I what's... was born in Iran. Uh, no, go ahead. And uh, I've been in Canada since 2016. Oh, okay. So well, you've been you were at, in in I. Uh, uh, how long were you in Iran for? I don't know how old you are. So how long were you uh, in until Iran? I was 22, 23 years old. Okay. Wow. All right. So what's what's your take on everything going on uh, between Israel and Iran? I mean, I know what you just mentioned, and I, I believe that probably informs you too, but I'd like to know your take specifically on what's going on here. Uh, on, on one side, I, I think that the reason like Israel and Iran do not get along, it's not because that they are that much different. They both, they have ambitions and they want to be like the bully in the region. Uh, that's why they don't get along. Like they both, uh, you could see these theocratic, uh, fundamentalist, uh, conservatism. Uh, one, of course, follow like the Islam. The other one follows like Judaism. Right. There, there are so many similar elements to them. Uh, however, in, in, in terms of how they value their own people, uh, I, I could you comparatively you could say um, Israel respects their people uh, uh, better like they try to take care of their own people a little bit more compared to Iran but the thing is I guess in in Israel so many people are actually fundamentally religious even in Iran if you are a very religious person you 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 will see like government as a very friendly entity or even government will see you as a friendly entity a, a, a friendly individual so there, there won't be that much of animosity but in iran there are so many people who are actually fed up with uh, uh imposing religious laws on people and like people have to follow it that's why there is this constant tension between people and government i do not i'm not sure whether it is necessarily the same thing in israel like uh people are more religious in Israel from from my point of view. And they they tend to adhere Judaism values in Israel more. Right. Yeah, I think I think people are wrongly under the assumption that um most Iranians are like extremely uh, religious, like Muslims or something. It just doesn't like. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, I guess now it's been a number of decades, but you know, it was not long ago that Iran wasn't uh, under there was rule from like a you know a, a religious theocracy. True, true. Yes, and you still see like uh, people are very liberal today but still you might see some residues from all those years of brainwashing in school uh, although if from elementary there is always this uh, religious thoughts really uh, like 
Islamic morality, like even university, if you become, if you want to become an engineer, there are some courses regarding these areas you need to pass, and it's like mandatory for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you, you might still see some these, as I said, residues of like brainwashing, but overall people are trying to, they're tired, they're, they're trying to distance themselves from religion, or at right. least make it private, not bring it to like public. Right. Right. I mean, it, it does feel like that's like, obviously, we'll continue to see this happen as the as as the years go on and the younger generations continue to be, um, you know, more uh, maybe even agnostic, if not outright, you know, uh, uh, non-believers. But religion plays a much less public role in their life. And it's either something they don't really follow all that much, if at all, or it's just something that they, that, that like just uh, informs their, their personal self. And they don't really, you know, uh, put it out so, on other people. It seems like it is going in that direction uh, in, in, in most places in the world. And I think that's, you know, I, I have nothing against anyone doing it, ha believing in any religion. I respect, uh, to me, I religion to me is, plays a, uh, important factor in like building community for a lot of people. So that part of it, I, I certainly respect. Cause I think that's an important part of human nature, that community building. But like the, the more everyone gets along, the better. So, and I think religion sometimes, uh, uh, harms that ability. <laughs> right. Right. It, it might've played a role, especially in Iran, because like Iran, do, uh, is made of different ethnicities to the Northwest. You have Azeris, Turks, you have, Kurdish people in the south uh, e, uh, southeast you have people from Baluchis, Baluchi people so so in, in terms of like bringing different different ethnicities maybe even together with different culture and backgrounds maybe religion was able to play a role in unifying them uh, but this is of course definitely a question for like uh, socio um, cultural uh, professors to maybe investigate further right. This was a great call. It was really interesting. I, I really appreciate you calling Thank in. Thank you. Um, are you, uh, you've been listening to this show for a bit or you just discovered it or I'm just interested because I think you're, this is the first time you're calling in, right? I am. This is my first time and I got to know you through the leftist mafia. I was originally, uh, follow, I'm still following David Dole, but through there I also saw you. It was, okay, every time there's a Bitcoin conversation, okay, you have to hear Matt Binder take. And, I appreciate that. Uh, get, <laughs> and that's why I decided to tune in. I love to hear it. Thank you so much. And uh, feel free to call in anytime. This was great. Really enjoyed the call. Thank you. Likewise. Bye. Oh, I love it. We got someone discovering me from the majority report. Someone discovering me from David Dole's side of the leftist mafia. Love it. Uh, let's go to the next call. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Matt? Hey, uh, what's well, not much? What's going on with you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's uh, Raven from uh, Central America. We spoke a couple times already. Oh, hey, yes, I recall now. Hey, Raven, how you doing? What would you like to how talk you about? Doing? Well, I've been listening a little bit into the whole subject. Uh, let me just give you one simple, straight out and uh, point of view in regards of the Israeli uh, Palestine situation. Sure. Uh, your private, private caller, I think he hit it on the dot. And we see it here in the Western Hemisphere. The problem of enabling any form of religion to play a role in the political scenario and become a force then to, to create and condition public policy is a surefire for death. Right. Because we saw it two years ago in Iran, the uh, Maxa Amini, uh, I'm sorry if I'm botching her name, I, I sincerely apologize, uh, the situation with women in, in, in Iran, um, we've seen how horrible uh, Islam treats women uh, in, in many ways, shapes, forms, and manners. Uh, and that clearly, uh, you know, the action that Iran took provoked by the action that Israel had taken a few days prior, it, it clearly shows you that the, the, the 
the simplicity to which we can say about Israel and, and the Palestine has to do with the ethnical conflict that has been ongoing for millennia, um, even more. Because it seems that the ethnical differences are too vast for them to have a capability of sitting down and, and trying to figure it out. Um, you know, a, a, anybody can go and, and investigate uh, some of that is not fairly talked about, but how some Islamic leaders in World War II supported Hitler because Hitler was trying to get rid of the Jews. Well, we know. We, we know, I think I think if you weren't aware of that to begin with, uh, you certainly have, uh, uh, and, and and you've been paying attention to Israel's assault on Gaza. Then you do oh, yeah. you do know now because um, Israel, one of their their attempts at controlling the narrative here is to claim that um, Hitler actually wasn't the main baddie in World War II. He was just taking uh, he was actually just taking the advice of the Grand Mufti, who was the one who yeah. actually wanted him to do what, you know, who wanted to actually uh, genocide the Jewish people. You know, Hitler didn't want to do that until uh, he was told to do that. There, there's no doubt that today Israel is uh, and government of, of Bibi Netanyahu, if I butcher his name, I don't give a damn, I don't care, call him correctly, um, is genocide. It's an ethnical cleansing. There's no doubt in my mind that that is what is happening right now. And what we are experiencing are war crimes daily by uh, the Israel government against the Palestinian and particularly those in, in Gaza, but we've seen it with illegal invasions of the West Bank that have been happening for the past 20 years, um, which many of us who work internationally and who have nearness with the United Nations have denounced systematically. And we've, we've been, um, you know, we've been um, accredited with reason on that, where the United Nations said, hey, listen, uh, this, uh, the legal invasions towards the West Bank are contrary to international norm. So fundamentally, yes, today the Palestinian people are the victims of that ethnical cleansing. There's no doubt. There's no discussion in that. All right. No, I, but, it's, I think it's, it's, it should be super obvious what's going on. I mean, anyone, that, anyone who denies that is just trying to uh, obfuscate what's going on for their own personal uh, reasons, whether it's, it's whether it's whether it's true, true truly believing in the the Zionist um, cause or if it's just them, their, their way of personally absolving their themselves. Exactly. Um, but but at the end of the day, it's super clear what's going on. I mean, and, and, and history, and his, history, history. History will completely, I mean, again, this is no help to the people who are being slaughtered right now, but history will bear out and show exactly how obvious this was. When this is in the, the history books and, you know, it's being taught to in, in high schools and colleges across the, all around the world, it'll be super clear what happened here. And, and what's interesting on this is that all, all, all of us here in the Western Hemisphere, we have an obligation to stand and say, Palestine has a right to exist as Israel has a right to exist. Both countries have a right to be, to exist, to develop, to be free, to live harmoniously and peaceful. But yeah, we can say that, but we also have to recognize that neither side um, has the right to ethnical cleansing either or. Um, we cannot tolerate anti-Semitism because we know where that leads. Uh, 74 years ago, we had the complete and utter evidence for the lasting of the Second World War, the five, six years it lasted. Um, and I, another thing is that we cannot confuse. You know, I, I, do have to, I do have to push back on that one thing because I think a lot of people say that. And I just actually don't agree with the idea that Israel or any country has this inherent right to exist because we know that's not just not true. 
Like we've had no problem throughout history saying that this country can no longer be. Look at Rhodesia. Uh, look at Nazi Germany. Look at uh, uh, Prussia. There have been countries that have come and gone. Um, I would say that people have a right to exist. And if those people are, you know, are represented or feel that they're represented by a specific country, then that is included in that right of, of basic humanity for, for people. But I don't think, you know, I actually don't think a country in and of itself has any sort of right to exist. I wasn't referring to the country as itself. I'm referring to the people who then uh, constitute that what today on modern political discourse we can call a nation uh, with those uh, concepts of delimited imaginary borders, sovereignty, etc., etc., etc. The right does not reside on the fact of country. It resides on the fact of the community of people. Of, of, of those people who share um, ethnical values, uh, cultural practices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that being understood, I think that the major point that we have to understand how functional the human rights, uh, especially with the application of the instruments in the last 74 years, um, apart from this perspective that Human rights are not a natural thing. They are uh, a well-structured um, normative application. And discuss it or not, the way that it, this implements, and I'll give you a quick example. If we look at, um, at Article 13, in, in not only in the subject of, of Israel, but we can extend it, for example, with migration, Article 13 of the Human Declaration of Human Rights, and then I'll extend it to the Declaration of, of, um, of Political and, and Social and Cultural Rights. Um, it tells us that everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. Everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. <clears throat> this idea, we can say it this way. Look. I'm somebody who was born here in the Western Hemisphere. I know my culture. I know where I'm from. I know what my heritage is. And interestingly enough, I can relate to that knowledge of where you pertain in this globe with an Israeli or a Palestinian or a Iranian or, or a, somebody from Ohio or somebody from etc. That, that notion of where we spend most of our time, where we were born, where we've mobilized the most, is, is not, it cannot only be treated as just a plain social construct. It's actually a, a, a fiber of the being. Uh, it's essential to oneself. So make it very concise. The right to exist is fundamental to the right of, is fundamental and works as a umbrella to and ties all together all forms of those rights that we have now known as human rights from freedom of speech, freedom of association, uh, freedom of having syndicates, etc., etc., etc. I can go on in that. Just to say this, the problem resides when people confuse the ethnical heritage with an ethnical right to delete the other who's different from, from themselves. And that is what we're seeing on Israel right now. But there's no doubt that on the counterpart, they would like to do the same thing if they had the power. The problem here resides is that that notion, that idea, is as dangerous as nationalism or as dangerous as um, uh, as uh, imperialism, etc. I mean, because it is it, it it is nationalism. Like that's what I always that's what I've been like sort of trying to uh, really uh, uh, focus on 
especially these past couple of months where this has obviously been an issue that's been, you know, obviously uh, the focus of, of, of so many, you know, people right now is that Zionism, if, if you are if you are someone who is against fascism, right wing nationalism, I mean, nationalism in general is right, uh, right wing. Then you 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 can't be a Zionist because Zionism is is, is definition de- definitionally nationalism. It is the 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 full throttle belief that it's all about a state for a certain group of people, and the entire project is upheld by this belief that some that that this group, the one group. Is better than everyone else because this is inherent to Zionism. Like it, it like it's it is what the Zionist project is. Like you can, you just can't be someone who is even like center left and be a Zionist. Like there are people who say that they are, but they're not. They're not on. You know what? They're they're not. Their their politics are completely off because you just What's can't. You're basically saying you're basically saying nationalism is okay over there, but not here, because over here, it's dangerous. Well, why isn't it dangerous over there? It's the same thing. No, and I I agree with you in that sense. Oh, I know you agree with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. um, But I'm gonna present you an interesting point and something that you said that really caught my attention. Let's not go far and let's stay here in our Western Hemisphere. Look at how people, when they say America, they only think about the United States. And they exclude any other country that is here in this Western Hemisphere and that had lived through the 506 years of darkness of the invasion of the Europeans here. Okay? When I talk to a U.S. citizen, as a Costa Rican citizen, my Americanness is deleted. I am not American. Even though I'm living in a region that is known as Central America, yes, we can agree the name America was applied by the colonialists, etc., etc., etc. How different is that from the conflict between Islam and Jewism? It's it's exactly as absurd as that uh, reality that those people live over there. Because at the end, at the end, and here we go to that point the, the prior caller was making, is how fucked up religion makes people. How they, how religion and the fundamentalist, either Islam or, or Zionist or whatever, enables people to, to look at the other one who may do things a little bit different and then say, we have to squash it. That they have this uh, notion of a moral, uh, a moral standing to go squash the other. The same thing Christians do. The same things, um, you know, so many other have done in the past, uh, from imperialism to the application of colonialism, etc. So, and and we're not far, you know. Interestingly enough, on your video that you were showing. Uh, here's the question. Oh, well, you guys came out and denounced the uh, the situation with Mexico and the uh, Mexican embassy in Ecuador. And you did not denounce the the um, the, the dropping of bombs on the right. Iranian consulate, etc. <laughs> and I'm laughing internally, thinking to myself, even the fucking gringos uh, uh, journalists use us as, as the backstage, as the backyard not understanding that yeah we can yes it's nice that you knew what happened between Ecuador and 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 um, Mexico but to associate it directly with the situation of Israel and Palestine you're fucking doing as an injustice to both sides because the reality of Israel bombing an Iran consulate or embassy Responds to that particular uh, reality in the Middle East, 
and the situation of the embassy, uh, which had been unprecedented in between Mexico and uh, Ecuador, responded due to the fact that Ecuador um, was chasing Jorge Glass, the ex-vice president of Correa, for four years, who had been sentenced for corruption cases in Ordo Verde, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can agree that an attack on an embassy is a big no-no, tremendously big no-no, right. and that there should be high prices to pay if they act like that. But to use one thing to to then try to connect it and and try to give it as an example, that's an that's also another form of, 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 of complete and utter blindness. And, and to this point, what I just wanted to say is we're not that far from it because our relation towards the United States in most of the occasions is exactly what Israel is doing to Palestine in many ways. They view us, many view us as illegal immigrants. Many view us as criminals who are coming into the country, those who are migrating. I've seen too many channels of the United States talking about Haiti without a clue of why Haiti ended up or where it's ending up. With oh, a yeah, yes. Yeah. Haiti always gets, oh, Haiti always oh, gets yeah. uh, uh, the coverage without any uh, historical uh, understanding from the people commenting on it. Absolutely. Um, Raven, this was a great call. Um I'm going to let yeah. you go only because there's a lot of other people on the line, but this was really great. And uh, please, anytime you want to call in, love having these conversations. Hey, listen, I got to send you an email about that idea of, of maybe in the leftist media. Uh, right. A conversation specifically and uniquely Western Hemisphere, Latin America, realities, history, etc. Because Let's do it. In the United States, that is lacking so much. People don't have an idea of uh, history from Mexico down to the seven countries in Central America, 12 countries in South America. Yeah, love it. I'm going to give it a space for um, for other pe people. And uh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Matt. Have a great night. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. A lot of people calling in today. So I want to try to get as many people as possible. Um, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, hey, how's it going, friend? Uh, it's going good. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey there. I'm, I'm Valorath and Twitch here. I've been, uh, I'm calling from uh, the Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Can you, um, can you listen? Uh, I, you might be listening through the live stream. Just put the live stream volume oh. down and just listen through yeah, the Skype one call. Second, friend. Yeah, because um, yeah, you're I, hearing you twice. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. No, the no ladies, problem. Gentle butts and everything in between. No, it's all right. So, <laughs> what's your name again, and where are you calling from? Um, I'm Balrath on Twitch. I'm calling from a Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, okay. How are you doing? What would you to talk about? I can't complain too much. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm disabled, and just our healthcare system in general is just trash. <laughs> So maybe, hey, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, it's like I know in earlier in chat I was talking about, of course, you know, Palestine and Israel and all that stuff going on over there, which is incredibly sad. Honestly, mm -hmm. I wish you would like stop giving them weapons, uh, like the U.S. government. Uh, we really need to not do that. But you know, uh, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. <sighs> It, it's, it's it's hard to talk about because you feel so just just you know just uh, just how they're treated as you know the, the well, and like they're treated just as not people by the, the right wing government over there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I know here it's uh, there's a lot of you know, supporters uh, typically on like the right wing fringes, you know, the Christian nationalists and you know so on and so forth over here. Well, you know for the various. Uh, reasons that they want the rapture to come so that's a way for them to do mm -hmm. that plus they just yeah. do hate anyone that's not you know <laughs> it's ridiculous i i think it's it's under covered how much of a driving force uh evangelical zionism is mm -hmm. in, in this country it is a major driver of uh 
Israel's uh, support here? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Jeffrey Kenny. Yeah, uh, uh, Charleston is a really beautiful place. Um, I like by walking around the city at night and whatnot. Uh, we have a lot of different kind of communities that, that, that mesh together. Like you have um, the Gola people, the um, Geechee is the language they speak. It's it's like an amalgamation of like multiple you know languages when they were brought over here from you know you know, slave trade like went through charleston of course just uh, historically speaking Interesting. um there's that there's some like a dc latino community so on and so forth here mm -hmm. so it, it it's really like a like a multicultural kind of a confluence on like around the charleston in the metro area, so on and so forth. Um, I do apologize for the stuttering. I it, it's a thing that I had to grow up with and, no, and deal with you know, through the I, years. I don't think anyone just can as tell. A, yeah. I think it was uh, you're you're doing fine. Um, it took a lot of therapy, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, it's like um, I, I think that the most pressing concern at least like locally speaking is the the lack of access to health care right i mean um, that's unfortunately being I think disabled it's really in... difficult just because right. i can't work right um so it's like, it's like i'm not allowed to drive because i have seizures so mm. you know uh, cars and then that doesn't mix <laughs> you know yeah. um no, I, I mean, I think, I, I, I think I think would get behind Medicare for all, but the that's not even how it is. Right. That doesn't even no. feel like it's part of the conversation right now. You know, it's um, mm -hmm. we're we're we, we've uh, obviously gone backwards when it comes to the health care discussion uh, in this mm -hmm. country. Uh, you know, it's I feel like it it's viewed as, oh, Bernie lost. So that's it. That's that's done. That conversation's no. over. Yeah, it's like the younger generations that are moving into various uh, congressional seats, both state and uh, and uh, and federally speaking, like with you know, AOC, for example, there's uh, I, I, like I can't remember his first name in Florida, but no, but his last name is Frost. Maxwell Frost. So, yeah, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, there you go. And I, I'm also paying attention to uh, your Twitch chat. And as well so i can respond to some like things that you know pop up there um you get ssdi there, there's a lot of, of limitations on it as well if you weren't aware like right. you can only have like around two thousand dollars in your bank period and then there's a certain like amount of like uh, of income that can come in uh assets for example, like um, like one car. Um, if you're married, you can you know have like a car and some other stuff. But it's as I you know call it a mandatory poverty trademark because that's you know, I mean that's basically what it is. <laughs> so, um, like people on Social Security disability and also SSI have these problems as well, of course. Right. Which is again that ties into Medicare for all and not having that access. Um, you have people uh, like I do have access uh, to SS, um, to, uh, to Medicare and and that kind of stuff uh, because of my status as I'm on disability and whatnot. But mm -hmm. if I were to say I go back to work part time, like I get. I could potentially they lose my benefits if I work too much or if I make too much. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, yeah. And right, that's... like, had, like then there's the backlog uh, to even uh, get your um, hearing. Can't have it, can't, uh, can't have people get in. Can't have people get in too. No, much it, in it, this it takes country, up you know? three years to get a court hearing. Uh, not even like the, like anything else. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah, the, uh, they would have to hire. Uh, um, a lot more people to meaningfully process all of this stuff, like another, you know, like 15,000 or something employees. I mean, to, to they, have really, it. They, they really don't so. need to. I think, you know, this is obviously measures that are purposely put into place to make sure oh. that the, yeah, least, cruelty of, is the point. least, yeah, yeah. That the least amount of people can get help as possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, right. 
Uh, but and, very, uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, call. I'm glad you called in to bring up these. I appreciate issues. it, friend. I, I've been watching uh, you, Sam Cedar, and like a bunch of others for a while. So oh, I love to uh, hear. Yeah, have a good night. Uh, stay safe. Uh, you know, mask up and everything like that. You're in public. Uh, COVID is still out there, and it All is right. still you know, killing a lot of people, unfortunately. All right. Uh, uh, great call. Feel free to call in anytime. Yeah, uh, appreciate it. Take care. Let everyone stay safe. Likewise. All right, folks, let's go to the next call. What time is it? Let's make sure we got enough. Oh, really quick, I wanted to thank um, – uh, we got a raid over on Twitch earlier about 30 minutes ago. Uh, KF Logan, 1875, thank you so much for the raid, and hello to all of KF Logan, 1875's viewers. Seemed like a good portion of you stuck around to watch because that's when the Twitch viewership spiked. Uh, let's go to the next call. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Ren calling from Oregon once again. Hey, Ren from Oregon. What's up? What would you like to talk about? Oh, um, gosh. Uh, well, first off, what have people been calling in about during the show so far? I don't want to uh, cover something that somebody's please, already touched on. F feel free. We're, we've run the gamut. We've talked about... Cool. Um, we've talked about Iran and Israel. We've talked about Israel oh, yeah. and Palestine. We've talked about uh, gun laws and and recent. Uh, oh, I was gonna say actually gun control. I've been trying to go. call in uh, to Majority Report to talk about gun control for a while. Uh, Please. I don't know what what aspect of it do you specifically want to talk about. You want to get in the minutia of like uh, of like bump stocks versus like different modes and rates of fire, magazine limits, uh, oh, I, stuff like that. I whatever you'd like to talk about, really. I I have no preference. Sure. We don't even got to talk about guns. It's totally whatever you'd like so, to talk about. Okay, so for me, as you know, I guess this ties in with like uh, SSDI and the shit with that uh, from earlier. So. Basically, I have been in the process of trying to get my SSDI for the last two years. Um, you know, I worked a, I worked a manufacturing job for a while, um, and that didn't really do me many favors with, like, joint issues. But, you know, the, basically this stuff is for, like, mental health disability, and I'm also kind of looking at, like, physical therapy and other stuff. Um, the position that it puts you in seeking a mental health disability is that basically like so in my example i have ptsd i have depression i have autism and a couple other things but you know like basically they want you to have to do a stint of like inpatient and you know i've got friends in california who like basically if you if you do an inpatient program like you aren't even able to apply to have a background check done for the next five years um and so it's kind of, you know, a frustrating position for someone like me who has SSDI. Like, I've got these diagnoses. I've got a million different people who could attest to how, like, PTSD and memory problems and stuff affects my life. But, you know, like, I, I, I grew up in the country. Like, I, I want to be able to do, like, clay pigeons shooting. I want to be able to, like, go varmint hunting or other stuff like that. And I feel like uh, things are kind of set up in this country to, like disenfranchise and disarm um, the people who have disabilities and also keep disability, sorry, people with disabilities from getting married. Like, right. I, I'm sorry, I know that was kind of rambly, but. No, I mean, I, I actually, you know, I don't know too much about, um, you know, uh, this specific issue. So, I, I mean, I know the, the, I would say the basics of what we're talking about. Um, but I mean, obviously I don't know specifics, but it does seem like the idea is anything that a person would like to do. Well, if you're really in a position where you get these benefits, you can't do them. Yeah. And it's like, you know, something that's pretty difficult is for me, like, you know, I'm, I'm 21. I have the work credits that I would need in order to get, you know, SSDI off of my work history. But because, you know, I only worked for like two years um, you know, like they kind of recognize, okay, if we based it off of that, your benefits would be so small that you would, it would be an upgrade for you to get SSI. So we'll base it off your parents, uh, work history or whatever that works to my favor because they've worked longer than me. 
but it's it's unfortunate because I could if I got married, and I, I really hope that the government addresses this eventually, if I got married, let's say I was in a house, it's like 10 years from now, we're like a third to half of the way paid off. If I were to get married to the person I was living with, then uh, I could I, I could very well lose the benefits that allow me to play, sorry, that allow me to pay for my place to live. And I don't know, unfortunate system we got going. Yeah, I mean it's 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 created in a way to make it so either um actually not either. Like you 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 really cannot get help unless you are in a position like you have to put yourself you know you you have to be in a position where you're basically not going to be able to ever get out of the position you're in to get these benefits. Like they want like like they make it impossible for someone to even sort of uh, uh, figure out a way where like, oh, I could get some additional income coming in because that additional income could yeah. take you out of those programs. But that additional income isn't and enough. The thing that a lot of people do resort. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, I was going to say that. But the thing is that additional income is not enough to uh, make up for the loss in the benefits either. Like they, they're not doing anything to sort of help someone get on their feet here. They're like, oh, they're like, oh, we'll be so nice to give you a trial work period. You can work for like up to six months or a year uh, while having your benefits reduced in a way that is proportional to your paycheck. So let's say, you know, somebody in my case, let's say I were to get twenty three hundred dollars a month um, and I started to. I started to work a job for 15 hours a week because you can't work more than 20 hours a week. Let's say that I were to get paid like that. Eh, seven hundred dollars a month or something like that off of that type of work well they would uh i believe it is uh they reduce one dollar for every two dollars you make so i could make a little bit more than what i would normally make but then after that six months or one year now i am who's only able to work 15 hours a week Ooh, you're, you're, you're breaking up, Ryan. I'm sorry. You're, break, you're breaking up here. Support system that I would have thought. Oh, sad. Okay. Um, if I lose you, I'll call you back. But can you hear me right now? Right now I can, but you were breaking up a lot before. So if it happens again, I might, I might have to let you go, okay? Yeah. We're passing through a valley, so we might lose you entirely. Cut me off if it gets bad again. It's all good. Oh, wait, I just realized you're using video. Hold on. Do you want me to pull you up on this feed? I didn't yeah. realize you were oh even... Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, no, I've been using video the whole time. I didn't just realize. It was the, the, the Skype window yeah. was behind my streaming window, and I didn't see that you were... I'm sorry about that. So you're in, I just realized you're in a car. Oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> I know. I know I'm being irresponsible. Oh, I'm stuck in the car with oh, the shit. driver. <laughs> This is Meredith from uh, from last time. The last time I called in with Meredith here, I think was like what a year and a half ago, give or take. I don't know. I don't even remember. That's how long it's been. <laughs> that's that's fine. I don't expect you to. I've only called in like three times. Um, but yeah, I, I guess getting back to like gun control, like you know, I'm I'm pretty involved. I try to be involved with my church. I try to be involved politically locally. Um, and when I try to talk to people in my local Democratic Party, keep in mind this is a pretty conservative area, their politics seem to be largely driven by, like, being anti-Trump without, like, criticizing the things that created Trump. And then when it comes to any issue like gun control and stuff like that, or when it comes to stuff like political violence or mass shootings, they tend to push it on to a moral failing of the person carrying out that violence rather than the things that actually like cause that violence, like education or like not properly uh, enforcing uh, gun laws when it comes to keeping people with domestic abuse histories from, you know, being able to own firearms. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 obviously um, you know we're obviously lacking in so many areas. Uh, you know, you brought up uh, you know obviously you were just talking about uh, SSDI, SSDI and uh, benefits for people who who need who have disabilities or issues. We were talking earlier with the previous guest, uh, previous caller as well, and then you know uh, 
now we've we just uh, touched upon guns. Um, it's clear that our pri- priorities are all over the pl- uh, over the place when it comes to uh, policy that helps people and uh, the the sort of um, uh, limits we put on them in terms of making sure they we're not actually helping people. I was also going to say, um, fuck. like, where are you at in terms of this November? How are you feeling about everything? I know that nobody's jazzed on, like, Biden as a candidate, but, like, what degree of confidence do you have that we're not going to have Trump in office January of next year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know right now. If, again, if prior to October 7th, I thought it would be uh, pretty obvious that Trump was going to lose. I, I think we still have to yeah. wait and see. It's 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 totally dependent on Joe Biden. That's it's that simple though. Like this is it is this is yeah. his race to lose. It'll be dependent on Democratic turnout, uh, and that's on him because uh, Trump's not getting anyone else. Like you know, Trump's uh, area to expand. With new vo- into new voter a new voter base is very limited. Um, so yeah. this is this is everybody. Everybody has already been polarized one way or another about Trump, and like I feel like there was so much room for Biden to grow into a I guess more youthful electorate, um, or like a more left wing uh, youth electorate. Uh, because wasn't it like even 20 years ago, like I think uh, Gen X and like early millennials were something like 10 or 20 points more right wing than current Gen Zers. Uh, wait, say that again. Um, OK, so. Years ago, like 2000, um, it was something like only a six point shift in favor of Democrats with young voters. But now that's looking more like 25 or 30 points. Yeah, I mean, I I think um, you know I always thought any any reporting or studies that found that young people were getting more right wing um, were extremely suspect to me. Um, it's it's clearly not the case. Um, simply put, I don't know what else to, what else to say about that. Uh, you just look at how they vote. Oh yeah, no, I I don't yeah. think we have a more right wing youth electorate, but I think twenty years ago. I think 20 years ago they were more conservative than they are right now. Uh, maybe 20 years ago I would be in my. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe that's true. Probably. Yeah, it was something. It was something like. Uh, it was something like Gore versus Bush was like. Uh, sorry, I'm getting into like elections nerd stuff. No, it's fine. Uh, I think 2000 was something like uh, the 18 to 30 was like six or seven or eight points in favor of Gore, but now that same electorate would be more progressive it, it kind of feels like though that we're getting like more polarization with us with like a moderate shift uh leftward like like i feel like you have way more people nowadays that are just out and out like like christian nationalists or white supremacists or you know there's not a lot of separation between those points obviously but like I'd say that's a solid, like, has to be at least, like, 15, 20 percent of the voters. Well, I don't know about 15, 20 percent, but, um, yes, there there are a lot more open fascists uh, since since Trump. Uh, You know, he made them comfortable in their own skin, I guess. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's like... Yeah, I might be wrong on the 15, 20 percent, but I feel like there's, like, a solid... Oh God, this is me. I think I, a I bit think I think there. I think if you are very online, your vision of I how am. this how this all looks is very skewed. When it comes down to it, even the people who are plugged in, the people who are watching this show right now, are in a very small minority. The people uh, who who take part in political conversations on social media, on Twitter, are in a very small percentage of the overall country. 
we we are we that. are very plugged in and we sometimes um have a skewed vision of what you know what the rest of the world normal people are are seeing to begin with even just viewing at all let alone what their opinion yeah. is on it i mean the perfect example is that the rights the, the right wing's obsession with transgender people they they think yes. that they they think that's a winner they think that's a winner because it's a winner between their very online base but the vast majority oh gosh, of people okay. The vast majority of people to, to bring look up at that, that DeSantis ad. Do you remember that? Uh, do you remember that uh, DeSantis ad with a black sun in it? I do. I mean, that was created by one of their uh, campaign um, uh, workers. It wasn't an official ad, if I recall. But um, the fact that he hired someone Sorry, who would, the fact that he would hire someone that would put that in there, though, it speaks volumes too, though. What was like? Uh, hello? Uh oh, we're breaking up. I'm gonna have to let you go, Ren. Sorry. Have a good night. Oh no, bye. Bye. It was completely before I was able to make out words and put things together, but then I just completely lost you. I hope you're having a good, uh, a good, tr good travels. What time is it over there? Uh, nine, eight. Oh, I guess it's early enough. I saw daylight, and I was like, "Where the hell are you?" Where it's daylight, but I guess it's still. You still got sun over on the West Coast for a little bit longer. Um, let's go back to the calls. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, man, it's Tony from Texas. Hey, Tony. And, and luckily, I'm now paying attention to that Skype window, and I see that you are using video. Can I pull you up on the feed? Please do. Hey, Tony, what's up? What would you like to talk about? Nice Sonic the Hedgehog behind you, by the way. Oh, I thank you. Yeah. Are you looking forward to the Knuckle Show premiering at the end of this month on Paramount? Uh, I am <laughs> now. <laughs> my, my son is a huge Sonic fan, and he loves oh. the movies, and so he's looking forward to the, uh, gotta, the Knuckle Show. I got to share a little ink. Forgive my not shaving, but... Oh, wait, oh. wait. I don't see it. I don't see wait, it. It's wait, the, wait, other wait. Way, the other way, the other way, the other way. Keep going the other oh. way. Oh, it's Sonic. Nice. <laughs> there nice. we go. Very cool. That is that is a literal kitchen tat, as in I had a friend come over, and I laid up on the uh, table in my kitchen, and he tattooed me in my kitchen. But are they do they are they a tattoo artist usually or no? They were they were going through their apprenticeship at the time. Oh okay, then that's that works. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I used to be I used to be when I was young. I used to be one of those people who was like, tattoo is a tattoo. If I could get one from an apprentice for very cheap, then then who cares? And then I got a tattoo from a, a good tattoo artist, and I was like. Wow, I can never go backwards again. There's a night and day difference. I can never. I, <laughs> probably, probably a solid quarter of my tattoo work has been done by artists in their apprenticeship, but every single one of them were artists that I've known for a long time. That's that's and, different. And then, and, yes. and like I was very aware of their artistic ability um and they'd already done work on their self on themselves i was impressed with so like Got i gotta say the, the 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 work of a good tattoo artist I, I i've been wrong for so long until i got a good tattoo uh not saying my other ones are bad but it's not just how good they are at drawing or anything like that it's the actual t skill of tattooing of applying knowing, that ink. <laughs> knowing exactly how deep into the skin you need to go, the pressure you put on it, the the ability to 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 make the tattoo look good is not just the drawing. It is knowing how to tattoo. Mm -hmm. And you are you you I am shocked to know how many tattoo artists actually don't get it until you go to a good tattoo artist. Yeah. Yeah. For I'm 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 I've been I've been lucky and blessed to uh, to have uh, known um, uh, m more than a couple of uh, very very talented tattoo artists, um, and uh, yeah, I'm 
not nearly as inked up as I'd like to be, but I'll get there someday. <laughs> yeah. So what was that to, to talk I, about? Yeah, I wanted I wanted to throw back um uh to uh to to uh to a time yonder um uh and talk about uh that uh Jesse Waters clip again because I, I didn't get to comment on that last week. Oh. Um because I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I have quite a lot of food service uh, industry experience. Oh, yes, we've talked about that. Yes. <laughs> and, like, you know, I get, like, the the thing that these guys are, are, are really and truly offended um, by is that uh, – it's just the idea of anyone outside of their bubble living a dignified life. Um, and, and so that's like, that's where Jesse's math came from. The, the hundred K that wasn't, that wasn't a, like a, like multiplication table math. That was a, what is the like minimum amount of money to like, uh, like uh, annually, to have to like live a dignified life and his brain said a hundred thousand dollars a year is the minimum amount it takes That's, to live a yeah. dignified life and he's like what That's a great point we're gonna pay people who serve us food enough to live a dignified life like that's right. that's where his math came from. Um, it didn't have anything to do with numbers. Um, it had to it had to do with his his uh, inability to see the humanity in others. No, that's a great point. I, I think that had a lot to do with why he threw a hundred k out just off the bat. Because because yeah, then as soon as he was like okay forty k, he's like okay well forty that times two that's like that's like almost a hundred k. That's practically a hundred k. To to me, I honestly I, I feel like that is the under. Uh, 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 it's it, that part of the his point is being underappreciated. I actually think that part was crazier than his assuming like twenty dollars an hour is a hundred k. The fact that he jumped to oh well, you know, then if your partner is also working that same job as you, as if it's a that's that's something that just happens. Like what does his. Right. Wife well, or partner even, work at Fox News or something? Is that what he thinks is like the norm? That e even even if we're going to be generous and and assume he meant just like work another fast food job for the same kind of pay, even if it's a different, even competing chain, like whatever. Like, well, I'll be generous and give him that point. The at the the end of the day, he's still. Like what we're going to even let like a, a household where it's like t you got t both both parents working and, and they're actually able to scrape together a living for their family. What? Yeah. What? You can't even hang on. What's going on? <laughs> what? No way. Like that's like so, you know, the the idea that um that uh, uh, there's. They're like any sort of like meritocracy or rather the meritocracy is anything even worth like chasing um, is is absolutely asinine. And people right. who get employed by Fox News um, regularly demonstrate that, as does the PBD podcast uh, coming up with new acronyms. Or like new new fill-ins for that acronym. That's a that's a that's a very interesting podcast. I need to pay more attention to it. Uh, I wish I, I don't wish. Mean, I don't mean I don't mean interesting in a good way. Yeah, no, it's but it's, I, I it's I, I, interesting. I, I'm unfamiliar with it for the most it's part. It's kind of interesting in the way that Rebel Moon is interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, that like was it, very bad that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, I'm, I mean, I watched it beginning to end and I appreciated like I didn't feel like my time was wasted because I learned a lot. I like the idea that like to do. I like the idea that, <laughs> that that was supposed to be a Star Wars movie. That's amazing. Yeah. Movie. No, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I mean, they made the right call because there would have been he, a horrible, horrible movie. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's my... re honestly, it's really looking like what's his face really just like hit hit it out of the park. With the Dawn of the Dead remake, mm -hmm. hit it out of the park with 300, and then that's all he got. He he had two good movies in him. He had two good oh. movies in him. 
like I, I, I actually watched a thing recently about like Zack Snyder as a director and and the the the, the video essay has kind of landed uh, right around where I feel in that like most of Zack Snack Snyder's works not really for me but like um, I like I like I, I, I see the talent that the guy has at, like as a cinematographer. Um, I hear. Yeah, these, I don't think he. Yeah, I don't think he like, should be a director. But like with like even as much as I don't really vibe with him, like I appreciate the way that uh, when he fails, he fails in really interesting ways. Like he's not a boring I mean, director to watch, even when I'm not really digging the movie. And eh, depends. There are there are real disappointments in his uh, repertoire. Um, <laughs> for example, because uh, I saw him recently talking about it, or or I saw an article claiming he recently brought it up. I mean, Sucker Punch is the perfect example of a movie that that is a, a failure in a really uninteresting way. Now, now here's an interest kind of non sequitur um, that uh, uh, th that occurred to me uh, this week. So uh, I I messaged in about uh, the the show Shorzy during Leftist Mafia to see if like David had had any commentary about it. It's like a, a Canadian sitcom revolving around some hockey players and stuff. Um, it takes less time to binge an entire season of that show than it would take to watch the Snyder cut of Justice League. Really? <laughs> Cuz oh, they did. Uh, uh they... M M M Emmy just brought up uh, oh no not not Emmy. Uh Cold Dog brought up Watchmen. Um it has its moments, but I actually think overall it's 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 a failure, honestly. It, yeah. It, cause it doesn't. I, it, it doesn't hit the right notes. The it, opening. The opening. I, I'll be honest. To this day, the opening of that movie is still something I think about. The opening, with the the uh, the the Dylan song, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, extremely extremely well done. It's all downhill from there. Yeah. yeah. It's just not. Listen. It has its moments. I would say its moments are are buoyed by its cast i think the actors in that movie uh who who play the roles that everyone likes to talk about are extremely good actors uh the actor who plays rorschach um the actor who plays um uh what's his face uh, uh dr Man dr manhattan um uh very they they are the ones who carry that movie honestly and then yeah, you can I, tell, and then you can tell, they're doing that because there are actors in that movie who are not good at <laughs> that role, and no one talks about that character, those characters, even though those characters are main characters, and it's because they couldn't carry it by themselves, and they needed a good director behind them, and he did not provide that for them. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think he has. He clearly has the talent because his early movies are his good movies. Um, something happened along the way, whether it is the money that he's making, the money that he has to use for the movies. Something is no longer clicking. This happened with M. Night Shyamalan, too. Um, well, I, th I think I think it's like um, I don't know. I think it's maybe a symptom of kind of the. Um, uh, auteur, a combination of like authorship and like you said, just like uh, uh, nearly unlimited resources. I like, mean, the fact that the fact that every one of his movies now is like, oh no, wait, I just need to like re re recut it and well, add another two hours to every one of his movies now, like. Maybe something's not wrong on your end. Like one movie, oh okay, the studio fucked you over. If it's every one of your movies now, it's very clear that you you are not doing your job because I got to tell you, um, with very few exceptions like Scorsese, every one of your movies doesn't need to be four hours. And if it yeah. does, then you have a problem. You you're not a movie director. Then maybe you should go into television. Uh 
Uh, I just have to call out Token Johans being correct about Mystery Men being the best superhero movie. <laughs> Mystery Men was a good movie. I don't remember it so much. Uh, live it was good. From what I remember, live it was action. good. Uh, but I, from what I remember, I mean, I honestly th- still think the, the, the first two Spider-Man movie with to- movies with Tobey Maguire are the absolute that's, perfect superhero that's movies. That's pretty excellent. The, Sam Raimi is a genius. I mean, it no. was... It was the perfect combination. It was exactly how a comic book movie should be put on on film. Honestly, I, I still think to this day that. But so, something as, wanna... as fun as some of the Marvel movies are, I don't think people would have gotten sick of them if they followed the Sam Raimi um, uh, 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 guidebook or whatever. I mean, formula. The sp- right. the, the, the Spider Verse movies, the Into the Spider Verse movies, are doing that. They feel like those. Uh, 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 the, uh, the like the animated version of the uh, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies to me at least in terms of like just having that obviously they're very different in terms of how they present themselves but that that same sort of like comic book to film vibe is there right and that's why those movies are so good too along with the writing which Sam Raimi obviously had and plus uh, um, uh, into the Spider Verse movies have uh yeah Phil Phil Lord and Chris Miller um. Uh, but like, and you know, something I want to point out is like often like folks like Sam Raimi and, uh, and Chris Lord and Phil Miller, though they strike me as the creative types that, um, are much more collaborative in their creative process and spend a lot more time like listening and incorporating ideas that other people are having about a certain thing. And being able to kill their darlings. I mean, look at George Lucas. Okay, the <laughs> the original Star Wars movie was as good as it was because there was a whole bunch of unsung heroes on in in the editing and writing and uh, room, like making sure that it was something like with a decent amount of of pacing and and uh and you know energy to it um that people really loved and then as george lucas went on in his career and had more kind of totalitarian control over his vision of star wars um it you know it it, i I gotta i gotta say as someone who has went back and watched all the star wars movies with my with my son um obviously phantom menace sucks um but the original trilogy attack of the clones has its boring moments but it's still a decent movie avenger the sith is great um the force awakens does a good job of setting up i know a lot of people are mad that it's the same as a new hope i think that that gives to the story of what they're trying to do i think that's fine the the uh, 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 the last Jedi, which I hated in movie theaters, but on rewatching, I really enjoyed. Then I actually saw the last Skywalker for the first time. I actually never caught it in movie theaters because it came out the same year my daughter was born, and I wasn't getting to the movies when I have a newborn at home. Um, I watched it for the first time with my son while after rewatching all the other ones, and. I think it really puts it into perspective how good everything that came before it is. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. It was actually really depressing how bad it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. And so I don't think awful. George Lucas, I don't think you could knock George Lucas. Honestly. No, no, no. Well, I think, my, I think, my, I think, my... fan, I think you give him Phantom Menace as his, his worst of the star Wars movies easily. Um, but, he... but at the same time, well, well, it can I, be it can be removed from the equation when I, I, last when last Skywalker can't. Do you know what I mean? Like, like like you could watch every Star Wars movie, but Phantom Menace, and it all works. You can't. I'm just I'm, I, I'm keep I'm not, Skywalker I'm not even out. Saying that like every every one of the prequel trilogy was bad because I I there's a lot that I like about um, uh, episodes two and three. Um, but uh, that being said, that like 
episodes two and three, I still don't feel were as strong or as tight as the like the original like oh like like the 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 episodes uh, five and six that I watched on VHS growing up, and I don't think that's just nostalgia talking. I think it's because uh, I think Revenge. Of the, time, I actually I actually do think Revenge of the Sith is up there. I think it's really solid, really good movie. I think it certainly deserves a place with that original trilogy. It, honestly, I think it's that strong. It it doesn't it doesn't either way. It doesn't belay my point or belay my point that uh, that that. Uh, when people get into uh, positions of power where they are required less and less to seriously consider the input of others, that doesn't just like have a detrimental effect on the people around them. It has a detrimental effect on their own output and their own ability to um, – you know, uh, 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 create in in ways that connect, like really connect with other people. Um, so, uh, I'll, one last thing, and then and then I'm gonna. Oh, hop also, off here. We're, we're, we're really quick, stay on the Star Wars thing, okay. really, really quick, because we're leaving out Rogue One, which is potentially, I mean. Yes, the original Star Wars movie will always be the best because A New Hope because it sets up all these characters. Like, it takes you know a stroke of luck to have like one character that completely becomes like a staple in pop culture. But for a single movie to come along and every single aspect of it to become such a pop cultural behemoth, it's like insane. So obviously, A New Hope is you can't knock that down. But from a strict filmmaking standpoint, from a movie standpoint. Rogue One is the ultimate Star Wars film. It is perfect. I mean, it's def. I like. I I I enjoy uh, a lot about Rogue One. Um, but it's not my favorite Star Wars media. I may I like. Um, which I'm gonna call it. Tom, I don't even remember the name of it. It's like the 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 handful of animated shorts. Uh, it was kind of like the Star Wars version of um, uh, the Animatrix. Um, and in fact, had a lot of the same studios that did did shorts where Animatrix did did these Star Wars shorts. That was really awesome. Um, oh, I don't think I've seen those. Um, if you if you if if you've got the 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 mouse sub- subscription to see the other Star Wars stuff streaming. Right. You can look it up. Um, look it up. What I really like about Rogue One too, and I, I mean, it's it's obvious, but I think it's in a, a part that's over. Like the people don't really think about when they think about how great it is. But the guy who, um, uh, the blind guy, who, who the, uh, I am mm-hmm. one with the Force, and the Force is yeah. with me. I really like his character because it shows what happens with people who if the jedi still existed would have obviously been a jedi like he obviously has the force but he has no training because the jedi no longer exists like the idea that they even thought to show that that there are because we all oh, we, we they show luke and we were we're meant to think that like oh he's the one he's the guy with the force and then they do the same thing with Ray, oh, that's she's the one. One, one uh, the, the, she has the Force, but there were many Jedi, which means there are ostensibly many people out there who could have been Jedi and have the Force, and have no way to show, like to put that. I thought that I, I enjoy that character a lot. Yeah, yeah, he he's definitely one of my favorites too. Um, but uh, Star Wars Visions, Star Wars Visions. I'll have to check what, that out. Check that out. Um. And uh, do you mind if I uh, plug before signing off? Oh, please, by all means. www.patreon.com slash Matt Bender. Oh. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I think I've heard of that on guy YouTube before. and Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he's pretty good. I heard he has his moments. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I, I heard. I heard though that he keeps promising all these new forms of content, videos on YouTube, a newsletter, and he just hasn't delivered yet. A Discord I mean, mod ship. Uh... Oh, the, let's not even get started with all that <laughs> stuff. Like my God, I've heard this guy is scam economy stickers. Completely derelict with all these ideas he's got. My God. Hey man, through the struggle, knuckle up. Keep your fucking hustle up. Oh, I've not heard that one before. Where's that from? Or did you just make that up? No, it's it's a line from uh from from a rap that my my best friend wrote years ago. Ah. All right. Anyway. Well, it, I like that line. Uh, Y'all have ha- a great night. Have a chat. great night, Tony. Take care. Bye. All right. I think we'll take uh one or maybe two more calls. Let's see how it goes. We're over the two hour mark now. Um, still, I'm still in it. Feeling a little blister. The, 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 the tiredness is starting to creep up, but we'll see. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Forrest from California. Hey, Forrest. Uh, what did you talk about? So, first of all, this is not what I called about, but I just wanted to let everyone know my wife's pregnant. You oh, know, congratulations. Thank you. I'm uh, very excited. Mission accomplished, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sounds so like it. If that was the mission you were trying to accomplish, then yes, a mission accomplished. Mm-hmm. So I just, uh, my actual uh, thing that I'm calling about is uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of people don't really have a good grasp on like how large Iran is and what it would mean to go to war with them. It's a big country, yeah. It is. And so I did a bit of Googling and put together some data. So <clears throat> Iran has a population of 88.5 million people, which might not sound like a lot to people from America, but to put that in perspective, Germany has 83 million and France has 68 million. So Iran is larger than France population. All right. We, we, oui, oui. uh, and then in terms of actual like physical geographical size, Iran has 1.6 million kilometers and France has 643,000. So it's double the geographical size of France. Yeah, it's a big country. It's it would Yeah. And it's 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 in a uh, you know, uh, it's also uh, you know, country that has uh, capabilities to uh you know we're not talking about like uh you know afghanistan or iraq here yeah and and also like they're so much more prepared for a real war than yeah so i was saying right yeah they could be like people really don't understand how brutal war is or even what it's like to be in the civilian like even if you're not being directly invaded like there are like economic consequences to war for regular people that people oh, don't course. think about or yes. comprehend right absolutely and so yeah that was basically everything i just wanted to give that bit of perspective for everyone no i'm glad you called in to do that because i think uh, you know, I, I, I knew how, not the exact number, but I knew Iran was a large country, but I think putting it into that perspective, which I had not thought about before, uh, you know, comparative to other countries that people are very familiar with, uh, is yeah. a great way to put it. I, I, you know, that's, Iran is not a small country. Absolutely. Yeah. It would, going to war with them would be on the same scale from the U S perspective as world war two, because right. I mean, so Germany had like Jap- Japan and Italy and a few other minor countries as allies, but we also had like a similar level of alliance um, in World War II. So we we would have like a lot less like genuinely invested allies to like participate in that war with us in any kind of meaningful capacity. Like I'm sure. Like European countries would send a few like platoons of people or whatever, but or maybe some special forces. But 
they don't have any material investment in what happens if we were to go to, to war. Whereas, <clears throat> so my point is generally just that it would be on the same scale as, as World War II, like purely from an us, like purely in terms of the U.S. mobilization. Right. Yeah, um, it would be it would be really bad. I think everyone should know it'd be really bad. And I think most people who listen to this show know that. But um it would it would not be a small time thing. It would be uh it would it would be a, a very uh bad thing. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah. <laughs> it would be it would be on the level of like the US like doing a one versus one war against Germany, <laughs> which right. we've kind of and done that. You know what? I don't. I actually don't think. I think. I think obviously other countries would get involved. Honestly, yes. Yeah, but I, I think they don't have the same skin in the game, and I don't think like I do think they would help, but not in like a significant capacity where they're like committing everything to the war or whatever. They might. They might like send troops like maybe a few thousand troops. They might send some special forces or maybe they do commit for a while. And then a, a year passes and they're like, Oh, well maybe this isn't such a great idea. And then they bow out, you know? Right. I think that's the level of involvement we could expect if it came to it. And I don't think that's enough to win a world war two level uh, or enough to like make a huge difference in a world war two level engagement. <laughs> no. Yeah. Right. No, great call. I think it's um it's a very good point. <laughs> uh is that all you wanted to talk about? Uh yeah, far? That's it. all right, great call. Uh have a great night. Yeah, you too. Um yeah. I mean I think that's an important call because it's it really gets to the point. I'll I'll take uh that was a short call, uh in general, compared to my other calls. I'll take one or two more calls. Let's see them come in, and I'll uh, I'll take them. Let's do this. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see who to take. Um, uh. Hey, what? Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Ah, I lost him. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, oh no, it's me. It's it's Emmy Martian. Oh, hey, Emmy, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Let me. Well, I, feel, uh, I feel like it's I feel like it's sure been a, meet you over here. Yeah, it's been. I feel a like it's minute. been a while. That's... Yeah, how you been? Ah. Uh, I've been all over the place. I've been all over the map. I'm I'm up here in Queens in New York City. You can put me on if you want. Oh, you're in Queens now. Nice. I'm in I'm in Queens right now for the moment. I'm up here near Forest in Forest Hills near the park. You know where oh, that is? I didn't know exactly where. I mean, I don't know exactly where you are, but I know the general area. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm in that general area, so it's pretty. Wow. Awesome. I rode. I it would, rode, it would, it would, I rode it, through it, the park it, the other day. It was awesome. You're talking uh, Flushing Meadow, right? Uh, uh, I think just like the, the, the Forest Hills Park or something. Okay. Oh, that park. Right, right. No, I know where yeah, you are. Then. All right. Yeah. That, yeah. now I know. Actually, I'm yeah. actually, you don't know this, but I've, I'm so entrenched in Queens that I have spies everywhere. So I actually know exactly where you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I'll bet. Uh, I'll bet. Uh, I, I, I don't, but, uh, what did you talk about? Uh, you know, a little bit of everything. You know, I, 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 I was. It was just a delight to see Ren and to see Tony. Uh, 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 just both. I haven't seen either of them in a long time, and it just it filled my heart to jo with with lots of joy to to hear them and see them. You know, I normally don't get to call in anymore because my own show usually lasts till about eleven thirty. Uh -huh. But I got done at like ten thirty tonight, so I was able to tune in. Because uh, ah, I, I watch your show, but just not live much anymore. Cause, I got uh, you. You don't have to. You don't have to lie either. You could just say you don't watch the show anymore. <laughs> I, I, you know, I watch. I, I watch doses. <laughs> I won't say I watch the whole episode every time. Okay. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. It's totally fine. Yeah. I listen. I get it. Your shows go on you. for like four hours sometimes. Once, you know? like I can only 
leftist mafia so much. You know? I hear you. You know, once I, I think people don't realize until they do their own podcast or YouTube, just like how much doing your own drains you from the energy, drains the energy you put into consuming others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a like little once, bit. It like once you're done at times. Like once you're done with your own YouTube video or stream or podcast recording or whatever it may be, you're like, you know what? I gotta step away for from the computer for a little bit. Just oh yeah. Get, when you shut get, it down, you I yeah. just shut the whole thing down for like two hours and I walk away from it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You, you gotta uh, do it. You gotta yeah, do it. Yeah. All right, so what? Uh, let's let's start talking oh, you know, about I, all the things you wanted to talk about. Let's do it. There were so many things I wanted to talk about, but also I wanted to talk about whatever you wanted to talk about. But you know, I did briefly just want to say we we. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend exactly about as much time I should spend on Zack Snyder, and that that's that time is now over. Um, nobody should ever be talking about him for any reason. It's not. It's a waste of time to even mention. Uh, uh, is he? I don't. I, I, outside of his movies, is there something I should know about him? I don't know too much too about much. him. Is there? No, is, is he got know, bad politics or something? I wouldn't say that exactly. I just, you know, he. Look, you remember those early days of Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, dude? He was showing up at like Comic Cons, and you know, I don't know that. There's not always the best stories in the industry, and that's just all I'm gonna say about that. I'm yeah, not, I mean, I, it's I don't it's like talking smack about nobody, but um, it is amazing how much the DC universe was the ball was dropped look, there. It's look, amazing. I, all I'm gonna say is there's a certain kind of crowd that seemed to get behind the. Uh, the, the Twitter campaign that, that he did. And that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, right. uh, what, what, what was I gonna, but see, that's the thing. We shouldn't be talking about pedestrian ass media like that. We should be talking about like, Oh, I love talking about pedestrian of Kab- media. <laughs> no, see, no, I know. I know. And everyone does, but I don't know. You should be talking about Knights of Cabrilla or, uh, oh, I don't know what that uh, is. I'm completely out of the loop. Oh, well, you know, I, that's that's an old movie. That's just it's an old Italian movie or whatever. Oh. It's got like an eight point one. You know, check it out sometime. I have to. Knights uh, of Cabrilla. Yeah, you never. Uh, I'm 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 bad when it comes to. Uh, Knights. Yeah, of... I watch a lot of old movies. I, there was that. You know, if you want something new, that new Ripley show was awesome. This does seem interesting. Hold on. Okay, check yeah. this out. Knights of Cabiria. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It is wonderful. It's like stars it's... stars Fellini's wife. What? I gotta That's check this right. out. <laughs> That's right. It's a freaking real movie, and it, it'll break your heart. It'll make you cry. Oh but no, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I want to watch it then. No, no, you do. You do. You know, uh, uh, if you want to talk about something new, that new Ripley show was awesome. It was all I've filmed not, in black and white. It was all not, all not done seen, in like Rome and stuff. Not seen that either. I'm Man. completely. You know, you know the, the Patricia Highsmith, uh, uh, Thomas Ripley novels, like the Talented Mr. Ripley with Matt right. Damon, with that movie, and uh, and the John Malkovich one they made too. Right. Uh, it's uh, it's Andrew Scott. It's the like the the guy who played Moriarty in that Sherlock Holmes series or whatever. He's uh. He's he's Ripley in it. It was really good. I'll have to check it out. It was like eight episodes, all black and white, all just gorgeously filmed. That's that's you know that's the real deal. That's I'll what have I'm to check it out. About. So, oh, it's great to see you, man. I, I wish I wish I'd have gotten to see more of what you're. You know, I heard. No, I heard just. Something. Caller, feel free. About listen, about listen. Stuff. If there's a specific, you we don't have to st- listen. I like I tell everybody, calls can be anything. They don't got to be right. on the topic of the show. Whatever I have you want to talk about wrestling for at least thirty minutes. Before, yes, so. although not this episode yet, but uh, yet I should say, I guess. But yeah. no, feel free to please. If there's something on your mind you want to talk about, let's do it. Was it? And, wasn't there a big wrestling thing the other day? Wasn't there like another WrestleMania or something the other day? No, last weekend was uh, WrestleMania. Re- WrestleMania was was it last weekend? Was it I last weekend? So. Wow, see, I think it was last weekend. I don't even know. I time in, time goes by I keep so in fast. Touch. Now. Look, yes, I, I it, think was. it was on the pulse of the. No, it was two. It was so. two week two weekends ago now. Whatever, I'm old. 
Two had COVID. Now. Okay, I got COVID. Oh, I, I hope came you're doing to New York better. City, and I got COVID for the first time after avoiding it for like five years. That's oh, it was your first with time you. with it too? Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, I hope was, you. I hope you. Hope you. Hope you've recovered. No. No long COVID or any. My, my voice is still not where it was, and I'm still a little bit, a little bit weak in the uh, weakness. But uh, you know, you do what you can. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You do what you can. I hear you. Well, uh, it was great talking with you. If there's it's great nothing to see specific you. you wanted to, to you know, just to... just that people should be watching better movies than than all that Zack Snyder stuff and all I, that. I agree. You know? Why don't why don't better you take TV a minute? Shows. Why don't you take a minute to before we uh, we say uh, see you next time? Why don't um, you take a second to uh, plug your your show? Oh, I do have a show for Dumb Industries. If you go to Dumb dash industries.com you can find my show it's actually dumb dash industries.com slash weird is the uh is the place to find my show and you can sign up for a free membership that'll let you know all I'm about what I'm, right what I'm playing what i'm playing tonight what? i played uh warlock last week it was i bury the living uh, uh, the dumb is, is this you what, wait, what is yours called again uh, weird and uh, wonderful. Weird Wednesday. and wonderful Wednesday watch alongs with Miss Emmy Martian. And, I like uh, it. Yeah, this I wish a, I this, had. This is a nice website. Well, yeah, we're a real. We we we're a real. It's a real company. I, no, I, I see. I I didn't think anything otherwise. I just yeah. it's a really nice website. It's Thank honestly you. better than uh, websites I've seen for shows that I'm assuming have much larger budgets. <laughs> it's a nice website. Our budget is is pretty low, but you know, that's that's actually I mean, I don't know. I I'm, I'm just saying talent, like so. I'm just talking about like even like really big podcasts that like everyone has heard of. Well, this is a better we, website than I've seen. Who who we carry who we carry the this mass. together? It's nice. We well, my boss uh, uh who's in the other room. Uh 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 we carry the Mads from Mystery Science Theater 3000, Trace Beaulieu and uh, Fred Conniff. They have a monthly show where they riff movies. And uh, Mary Jo Peel, also from Mystery Science, uh, has, a, has a couple shows. She's got a movie uh, uh, night, and she's got a, another thing that she does, uh, chit-chat and tidbits and, uh, and her own show. And uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Just dumb-industries.com. We have a ton of programming. I will but check. Yeah, I, do. I, I will check we, we watched, more into this now because this. We looks, watched uh, that 1997 great. Justice League pilot yesterday. Yesterday, uh, the uh, the failed pilot for the Justice League of America from 1997. It's really just awful. It's God, it was so bad. It was so bad. But we 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 watched that and riffed it and made fun of it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, check it out. Sounds good. All right. Well, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you for letting was, me plug it was, my show. It, yeah. it was it was great to. Um, it's always wonderful to see you at the lights, and maybe I'll run into you in Queens. If I do, maybe. I'll try. I'll try not to like a fan girl and and like, but I'll just be like, hey, Matt. Please. Sounds good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Have a great night. Enjoy right, Queens. Take care, Bye. my friend. Ciao. That was great. Um. You know what? I'll do oh, a bunch of people tried. It's still trying to call in. Um, I'm going to start reading Super Chats. I will take one, probably one, but let's see how long it goes. Maybe two, most likely one, though. Calls. Um, Mike Thompson with a $3 super sticker. Um, oh, thank you, Mike Thompson. Uh, to the, the, the pair working out. Oh, here we go. Let me take this call. This might be the last call of the day. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Um. There you are. I hear you now. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Hey. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you just fine now. Yep. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Law Sue. Hey, Law Sue, how are you? What would you like to talk about? Uh, well, what do you want to talk about? No, no, no. You're first the caller. First. You're the caller. You got to bring up. First things first, Matt. I'm, <laughs> I'm, this is Law Sue, the one that Lance was telling you about on uh, one of the leftist mafia shows. 
Okay, I, I, it sounds familiar. What, 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 how, how did your thing, your name come up? Um, I'm one of the indigenous people on Turtle Island, what you guys nowadays know as uh, the USA or Canada. Okay, interesting. I've been, I've been waiting to be get, uh, to be get, dragged on to leftist mafia for a while. Oh, we got to so get part you of on. that. Yeah, so part of that is allowing the rest of the co-hosts to get to know who the fuck I am. Pardon my language for those of you on YouTube. Well, you don't have to do that, but it's nice. So what would you like to talk about? Um, well, I mean, wait a minute. How do we get the sound up? Uh, can you hear? Oh, wait, hold on. You know what I think the problem is? Hold on. Let me. I think you have the wrong um, on my end. Hold on. Let me fix this. Hold on. You might be hearing me through the wrong input. This should be sound better for you. You should be able to hear me better now. Is that, does that sound yeah. better? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, what so would you like to talk about? Where do you want to begin? I mean, uh, first I mean, we, first it, it, it have... is sort of the it is sort of the end of the show. So we don't have yeah. too much time. So you could definitely call back in. and I'll take your call if we want to get into something more, you know, uh, deeper than that. But let's um, let's let's talk about something for a couple of minutes. So let's bring bring something up and uh, let's get into it. All right. Well, first, there's a few things and I'll try and keep it in the short form. Sure. Um, first, you know, uh, I know Canada has what they call the MAID program, which is uh, basically a eugenics program that allows them to literally commit an assisted suicide on anyone who has any disability issues, everything from like as simply having ADHD, but everything else of them is healthy um, to those even more with more issues. Uh, I know the United States has a similar thing as well, and they've been pushing that, um, which is really screwed up because there's a lot of people that, um, that basically we're looking at like literally losing a lot of people just because they may have a little bit of issues in their life. Right. Which is really fucked up. Yeah. I... Um, so I just wanted to point out that, um, like up here in Canada, nobody knows how the hell that May program got into being officially accepted by the government as how to do things. Mm. It just was snuck in. There was no, no vote for it. What, what, give me a, a quick rundown of what that... It's, it's, it is actually lurk. There is a court case right now going on in Calgary, Alberta, where a young lady in the early 20s is going to court because her dad doesn't want her to have a maid when she managed to get maid signed off by a doctor and a practitioner. And one of the do and then the third doctor said no. So there's actually a court case going on right now about that. Okay. Um, it's in the news. You can look it up. It's there. What's uh, um, uh, what, what is the case? What is it called? Um, well, the one for the young lady is made. It's a case between, um, yeah, but it's called, but it's through the MAID program that they have now in Canada. She wants to be, she's literally trying to get that done and her dad's fighting against it. Um, I showed it to Lance too. Um, no, MAID, like. The doctor and practitioner, practitioner is just like a nurse that has the ability to sign medical stuff okay. where a doctor actually is more. That's it. Made Thank you, John. Oh, okay. Made. Medical ah, assistance. Okay, in interesting. I have to, I'll have to read into this more. Okay, interesting. But now that I know what I'm looking at, this is a, uh, the first step to know. It's yeah, the exactly. Right exactly. Keyword. It's, it's legal <laughs> use in Asia. It's basically, yeah. Right. basically taking somebody's life. Um, it stands for medical assistance in dying. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, there there there's some things of that, um, which I think we all of us should be really looking into, right? Right. I mean, I think uh, I, th- I think obviously that people who um, we don't have that here in the U.S. As far as I know, maybe there's certain states that have it. I don't think so though. But I do think that people who uh, hit certain barometers in terms of like the ability to decide to 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 do that, like making sure they're in a you know a, a state of mind where they can make this decision, I think they yeah. should be allowed to. Uh, obviously, I, I I you know I think there's people should be able to dying is part of life, and people should be able to die with dignity. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just one thing that we should all be looking at um, and keeping a close eye on because a lot of it is just eugenics. It's the same thing that, like, the scientists of the eugenic scientist programs back when they wait, had what, human what, zoos what, in, in what, like, what the are, 40s. I'm, I'm lost here now. What, what are you saying? What is your, your point here regarding this? So... The eugenics program is back in like the the 1920s into the 50s, which they also did through human zoos as well, which you know, you, New York had a famous one where they had like this one um, Uta Vega um, guy that they put in with a, with a chimpanzee. Um, it's literally uh, the Canada, United States, and many other places literally had human zoos. It was 1996, I think, was when the last human zoo on Earth closed down. And France was the one that had the last human zoo. There's Mm. lots of things out there, man. It's like really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the... Uh, I have to look into this uh, specific thing, but thanks for the call. We'll have to. Uh... Well, hold on a second before we get too far, Matt. I don't want to. I don't want to leave you quite completely yet. Okay, go ahead. Okay no, fine. Yeah, we sure. Still have a few more minutes, but um. So. Some of the things that I wanted to more talk about more, like there's a whole bunch of different shit, right, going on that. Um. That it's important to know or it's important to talk about. So, um, between like a lot of us indigenous people here on Turtle Island, that's actually what North America was called before first contact. Um, the Americas is literally just a name, um, of a, of an Italian pickle jar salesman, Americano Dispucci because they didn't want Columbus to look like a complete blundling fool that he was um, of getting lost at sea and washing up on our shorelines. Um, So I think it's really important that people know about some of these things and understand these things in the history and how it still is affecting today. So as we watch and we're, we're all in just disgust with the genocide going on currently in Palestine, right? right? We're we're all disgusted by it. Um, But there are plenty of places like here on Turtle Island where indigenous people are still being genocided to this day. Even the separation between our southern relatives from the fake U.S. border, right? being called Mexican or illegal immigrants and all kinds of different stuff when they're actually indigenous people to this island. They're not immigrants. Right. right? Um, like I know up here in Canada, they're still doing, um, putting IUDs in young girls, young native girls that <laughs> get taken away from their families um, at like the ages of between four and and 14 um, for simply their family being in poverty. That's the main core reason is they're in poverty and that's a forced poverty put on by by the Canadian government 
on on indigenous people that live on reservations. Horrible. And they're being put into foster care system where these foster care systems are being paid ten thousand dollars per child per month in their home. Most of them have four or more kids through the foster care system in their home. So they're making mad bank, right? In the same time, IUDs are being put into young girls because the foster parents are literally, uh, it's a high risk for that child to be raped and molested in that foster home. So the social workers are going above and beyond their parents' right, right? and getting right. IUDs put into these young girls to hide the fact and prevent them from getting pregnant by any chance Jeez. and to hide them being raped. That literally any woman out there can tell you having IUDs put into your body is a hard enough thing as an adult, let alone an underage child. Um, and these things are still going on to this day, right? Not to mention all the murdered and missing women, indigenous uh, women, girls, two-spirited, and boys and men as well. Like, it's an ongoing thing. Um, it's not, like, people, people like to walk around in today's society um, and think that um, the Indian wars are over. They never ended. Mm -hmm. it's just been taken away from your everyday viewer ship right. of it right of you being seen it right right it's no longer so much in the public eye right no, that's a good point that's a, yeah, that that same thing could be said for a, a number of issues a number of things yeah like on. even right. even though even the war between israel and palestine has been going on a lot longer than october 7th of course yes Right. Even right. the war between Russia and Ukraine has been going on a lot longer than it became publicly newsworthy. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's right. a lot of these things that are going on. So. You 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 have to remember that there's how do I put this? There's a certain group of people that came over with the first group of settlers which were Puritans, and they didn't disappear. They're still here today. Belt. Sorry, my, one, one of my, one of my AirPods died. Sorry about that. I hear you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, my, one of my so, yeah, AirPods. I had Go to ahead. switch earphones? Yeah, one of them uh, died. Go ahead. Keep going. I hear you now. Okay. Yeah, so what you're looking at is there's there's still that group of Puritans in this country. If you're in Canada, it would be the, cons the Conservative Party. If you're in the United States, it's the Republican Party. That's those Bible thumper Bible belts that are running around going, yeah, we want Trump. All right. You know what I mean? Um, it's the ones like that want Prager you to be taught in, in, in from kindergarten to grade 12. <laughs> right. Yes. You know My what I God. mean? When yeah. They try and yelp about critical race theory being taught when it's not even taught until you get into college and university. And that's a specific course yes. that you have to take. I mean, they know this right? for the most part. Most of these guys know this. They use it to their, uh, it's part of their grift. Advantage. Yeah. They use it to their advantage in their, and their, their, their lies, their falsehoods, right? Yes. Meant to confuse people and get people scared and everything else. And it's been an ongoing thing for quite a few different generations, right? They did the yes. same thing when it, like, back in the days of the 60s, with the hippies. They did the same thing with Martin Luther King. They did the same thing with Floyd Hampton. 
they did the same thing with American Indian Movement with Leonard Peltier. It's all the same thing. Nothing has changed. Even today we look and it's the same thing. Right? Right. This is why I keep trying to express to people we need to respect the elders of our revolution. Even though they might be old, they have a lot of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, or the old wasp from Jamestown. Yeah, your mom, yeah. Like, there's a whole bunch that's there that we're not getting. And the younger generation ain't getting because it's not being told to you. Right. Right? It's being hidden from your everyday, everyday entertainment, if you will. Right? Your everyday viewership. It's being hidden. Well, um, Lil Sue, this has been a uh, very interesting call. Um, <laughs> so... We, have we, I piqued I, your interest to get me on Leftist Mafia yet? Oh, of course. You didn't even have to. You had my interest before that. I'm just basically <laughs> saying we got to wrap it up because uh, it's getting late and I'm not going to be able to. Very soon you're going to be talking to me and I'm going to be like just uh, gl 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 eyes glazed over because I'm, I'm, I'm at the end <clears throat> of the day now. Uh, so I appreciate the call. Definitely please call in again. Um uh, uh, in the near you call in the next show so I'll take your call uh, I'll take your call earlier so we have more time to really get into things but uh, definitely uh, we will work something out to get you on Leftist Mafia and uh, have a great night alright thanks for actually having me on Matt and we will try and get in I'll try and get in next time or when I'm available to come in and you're streaming and doing call-ins um, and once again, thank you very much, everybody, for allowing me to come on and be on. Take care. Have a great night. You too, bud. I feel bad because it was a very interesting call with a number of very interesting issues. But I personally, I mean, the worst part is that, you know, the last call of the night is probably the worst time to talk about um, assisted suicide, uh, the history of... Um, uh, human zoos, which is a real thing and very serious issue. Um, uh, just I, I need to have the mental capacity to handle those conversations, and I don't have that this late at night. He did a great job talking and walking us through it, but in order to have a full blown conversation, we need to do that at a different time. Uh, I'm tired, folks. I, I wish this was my only job because if it was, I'd be streaming much longer, much earlier. Uh, but I, it's not, and I would like it to be one day. But we're not there quite yet. Um, so let me read the super chats, and then that's the show. Um, uh, sorry, Kowalski says, Matt, give me three hours to talk grain trade. I tried to, I picked up your call before Kowalski, but you hung up before you said anything. All right, let's read these super chats. Uh, there's a few from Renee. I'm going to read all of Renee's super chats right now. Renee says, nothing on Mexico v. Ecuador, or you think it'll be a tequila drink off? I don't know enough. I'm not informed on that one enough to have a take on it quite yet. Renee says, I get David Cameron and Douglas Murray mixed up. I mean, easy now, right? Uh, Renee says, you all saw it. He had a gun. I'm going to talk about that video from earlier we talked about earlier. Uh, Renee says, careful with the G word, caller. What G word? I missed it. Um, do, 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 do. Um, Dan it. Powell, thank you so much for becoming a member on YouTube. And also, Callie Braiding, thank you so much for becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Matt Binder. I love to see it. Really appreciate the memberships from both of you. 
Uh, once again, that's patreon.com slash mapbinder. Jay Cass with a super chat with a super chat says short stack thick like a goblin. <laughs> oh boy. Uh MD with a $10 super chat. Thank you, MD. Hey, Binder sent you a vid on Twitter DMs on March 23rd. Have a gander. Oh, I will. Sorry about that. I'll take a look. Wait, I right now because I'm too tired. Oh, my God. But I will remember to look. Um, Tokyo Hans with a super chat. I am not advocating for the chat to all get matching Doom tattoos on their foreheads by apprentice tattoo artists. Absolutely not saying we should. Oh, boy. Uh, Tokyo Hans with another super chat. Mystery Men is the best superhero movie, is it? I have not seen it in a while. I'll have to go check it out again. Um, I do know Paul Rubens is in it, which gives it a big plus one in my book. And Kowalski with a $10 super chat. What birthday gift are you getting Emma for turning the big 30 tomorrow? You should roll in with a party background and playing music. Also, an Iran war might increase food prices. So I'm pro-war now. <laughs> Spoken like a true farmer. And that's right. Emma Viglin's birthday is tomorrow. She's turning 30. Um... We'll have to wish her a big happy birthday on a majority port tomorrow. And oh, Kowalski with another super chat. Another ten dollar super chat. Take my call on MR tomorrow. I'll probably be I'll be pro war for all the wrong reasons and really confuse everyone. Got it. And the MD with a super chat. The vid is only fifteen seconds long. Are you asking me to play it on the show? Hold on. Let me I'll I'll look really quick. March 23rd. Oh boy, there's so many. Is it a song you sent me? Can you bump the message? I don't think I'll be able to read it right now, though. Um, but thanks for the super chat, <laughs> uh, over on Twitch, um, rude dog, two, five, two, five, resubscribe at prime subscribe for 16 months. I love it. Thank you so much. Rude dog. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I, I I'll try the emo dragon resubscribe with prime subscriber for five months. Just last week, I had posted about how impressed I had been with the restraint of Iran thus far, especially with what happened with Soleimani. My bad. Looking forward to Hanzi's call. Great work, Matt. No call from Hanzi. And you know what? I will say Iran has been uh, fairly restrained, honestly. And I think they knew they would be... They, they, this wouldn't ha they, this This was all for show. Anonymous Gifter gifted a one-month tier one sub to Right Said Rob. Thank you so much. And Venus Blood Flow gave out 10 community gift subs. Thank you so much, Venus Blood Flow. And uh, once again, thank you, KF Logan1875, for the raid. Um, folks, who should I raid over on Twitch? And once again, I'll say it again. Patreon.com slash Matt Binder, if you can afford to do so. That monthly membership really helps me uh, grow the show, roll out. Uh, new things, uh, expand the show. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you can and would like to. If you cannot, just keep listening, enjoy, and you can help by spreading the word. Let people know about the YouTube channel, the podcast. Um, that's greatly appreciated. And of course, just your listenership and viewership is greatly appreciated too. Uh, who should I rate over on Twitch? Um... Oh, yeah, I should check who's even on. We got um, Conyer, Jason Society, Actual Jake. I don't see Riverboat Jack on. Is Riverboat Jack on? Why would Riverboat Jack be on if I don't see them? No, they're not on. Riverboat Jack is not on right now.
Oh, letter hack is live. What's let what what is letter hack's channel again? Um I don't remember what letter hack letter hacks chat uh, 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 uh what his YouTube ch uh, the Twitch channel is. Oh, Ed Zitron was on uh, on. Uh, oh, I can't, you can't raid on on YouTube. Uh, I'm talking Twitch only. Uh, but Ed Zitron was on the Surfs earlier. I have to check that out. All right, I'm 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 making the call then. No one's given me anyone who's actually online on Twitch. I will raid. Let's see who's got who could use the viewership right now. I will raid. Yeah, I'll raid Echoplex Media. Let's do it. I'm hitting that button right now. All right, everyone. Leftist Mafia tomorrow night. I'll be on the majority port tomorrow for Emma Viglin's big 3 0 birthday party bash, whatever you want to call it. Who knows what we'll even do for it. Um,. Yeah, let's uh, let me let me raid Echoplex, and I will see you all next time on Doomed. <laughs>